And now, live from beautiful Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, you're watching My Fellow Americans with your host, Spike Cohen. Yes! Yes! One year! One, technically 364 days. Because it was, it's not a full, it's not a full year. Well, I don't know how that works because, I'm not sure how that works because it was on the 5th and this is the 3rd. Welcome to my fellow Americans. I am literally Spike Cohen. I am so happy to have you here with me on what is basically our one year anniversary-ish. It was the 5th, it was supposed to be on the 4th, and it was on the 5th and now this is the 3rd. But bear with me, this is the anniversary of the same week. I think that's how that works. I'm so happy to have you with me. I can't begin to tell you how excited I am. It's been a year. And you're still here. I mean, you've gone off and done things and so have I, but we always come back together right here on My Fellow Americans with me, Spike Cohen. This is a Muddied Waters media production. Check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Anchor, Twitter, Periscope, iTunes, Google Play. Check us out everywhere. Go to muddywatersmedia.com. Go follow us. Hit any bells if applicable. If you're on YouTube, hit the bell. If you're on anything, notification, see first. Do all of the things. I would hate for you to miss even a second of Muddy Waters Media content. Give us five-star reviews everywhere. We want everyone to know how much you love me. Me, Spike Cohen. Share this right now. The last thing I want is for your close network of however many hundred Facebook friends you have or YouTube followers you have or what have you to miss out on a roughly hour-long libertarian radical podcast in the middle of the week. I would hate that. So be sure to give the gift of Spike Cohen today. Kids love it. This program is brought to you by Anchor.fm. I will be plugging that later, roughly halfway through this program, as contractually obligated, uh, probably at a very inappropriate time. Uh, The intro and outro music, as always, for this and every episode of My Fellow Americans, for the last year, one year anniversary, is from the amazing and talented Mr. Joe Davi. That's J-O-D-A-V-I. Check him out on Facebook. Check him out on SoundCloud. Go to joedavimusic.bandcamp.com. Buy his entire discography. It's like 15 bucks. Be sure to do that. I'd like to thank Canada for this delicious natural Canadian. Can you see that? Natural Canadian water. It's real Canadian. It's not just Canadian. It's real Canadian. Bulavanaka. Oh, that is deliciously Canadian. Shout out to Tehran Turks' and mom and him as always. Guys, before I introduce my guest tonight, I'd just like to take a minute to thank everyone for being a part of my fellow Americans for the past year. When I was asked last June if I wanted to start doing a weekly show on Muddy Waters, my initial reaction was a combination of real excitement and existential dread. Mostly dread. It was mostly dread, honestly. I had to figure out how to host a show, how to run the streaming software, still figuring that out. Uh, I didn't know if anyone would even want to watch, much less to be my guest. Uh, the first couple shows were, they were rough. They were rough shows. Uh, I love watching them, but holy hell, were they rough. But over time, I have gotten the hang of it, I think. And it has come to be one of the biggest highlights of my life. I love it. It's one of my favorite parts of the week, doing this and Muddy Waters of Freedom. I love it, and I love y'all individually and as a collective. I love each and every one of you and all of you together. So thanks again for hanging out with me every week. Or when you can. Thank you again. Uh, And I love my guests too. Guys, my guest tonight is the future of Muddied Waters Media. He is the future. Dare I say the future of libertarianism. He holds the entire movement solely in his hands. No pressure. He is the host of uh, Mr. America, The Bearded Truth on Muddy Waters Media on Mondays and Fridays. Uh, and he is very active in the Libertarian Party. He is the recently elected chair of the Greenville, South Carolina County Libertarian Party. He is, I already said this, the host of Mr. America, The Bearded Truth. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to my fellow Americans, Mr. Jason Lyon. Jason, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's truly a pleasure i mean you know been watching you for a while uh do i get do i get to do the long time watcher first time coming on yes do that um, right now it's 
it's truly an honor to come on and, and to, to share with you your your one almost your one year anniversary. I got to hold that against you. We, we are a day shy. So uh, technically you know, two days. It's an honor actually, to be on yeah. here. And uh, you definitely you definitely built up what's in my hands like that. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> one day I'll be able to get there. But uh, don't don't <laughs> don't get too uh, too ahead of. Oh no! If no, that. listen. If uh, America isn't um, libertarian by the time I cross the border back into the states, then I hold you personally responsible. Um, again, again, Good. not not in a way that would evoke pressure. I just want you to know that. Um, I uh, I'd like for you and all of our watchers and listeners to know that I have been growing this beard for roughly three weeks in anticipation of having you on, uh, just so you wouldn't make me look like a prepubescent boy in comparison. Good. I've been. I've also been growing mine for about three weeks, so we're <laughs> we're right on par with each other. I can tell. It looks. It looks good. That's a good. That's a good three week shadow there. Um. So, um, guys, be sure to comment with your questions and thoughts. And Rem, you're not Remzo. Jason and I will tell you if you are right or wrong. Remzo will too if he tunes in. Need to update. The I'm notes. sure Remzo will tune in and, and tell well, us we are absolutely wrong. Well, we were wrong because Remzo uh, isn't on. Well, re not Remzo. Uh, this is your first time as a guest, as you said. Um, and the first question I ask new guests to my uh, show is, how did you reach your political beliefs? Uh, would you say that it was kind of an aha moment or a, or a gradual evolution? Tell us about that. It was definitely a gradual movement. So growing up, my entire family is is deep red. Um, okay. Conservative through and through. Um, veteran family. My grandfather served. All, most of my uncles served. My father served. Everyone everyone served in the in the military. So we all had this this uh patriotism that just flowed through us and right. um so i joined i joined the the navy myself and was on submarines went through and really one of the things that that got me into political thinking let alone my my views was we had this smug guy that was on the boat and uh he was a bernie bro and i just I looked at him and I was just like, man, you're so smug. You're so annoying. Like, I'm going to do research just to figure out how to, like, beat you in your, with your own discussions. <laughs> right. And uh, so I started getting into it. And then I was like, I was looking at, like, the conservative side of things. And I was like, oh, well, you know, this this stuff is interesting. It's, it's yeah, I believe in freedom and I believe in, in like, the power of the individual. Um, you know, the, the basic concepts of of the constitution you know the right of freedom of speech the right of freedom of religion freedom of of natural defense you know the second amendment privacy right. et etc cetera, etc cetera. and as i continue to to look into these things um i realized i didn't put a limitation on them and that's what really separated me between or separated me from from what a republican or what a conservative conservative uh, con yeah, conservative was, you know, right. I, I didn't put a limit on it. I said, you are free to exercise your rights, your natural rights. And so started falling further and further um, down the, the quadrant, if you will. And uh, square, square <laughs> the political landed. compass down into and the right on the compass. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. You know, the last couple of times I've been taking these these things, it's negative or sorry, it's 98 negative 99. So I fell pretty far radical and uh you know right. just fell in love with all the ideologies fell in love with ron paul um went into the economics and, and you know the, the austrian economics laissez-faire the you know the, the freedom and uh it really spun me up and really got me on on board with things and it it brought me to where i am today where i i look at the government and i i can't find i can see the good intent but i see also the the results and and that's what really brought me here and so it was just this slow gradual pull straight down to the bottom right and and here we are today <laughs> that's awesome and i was when you first reached out to us about you know sharing each other's show before you were on muddy waters i started watching your show because i was like yeah sure that sounds good and i thought well let me actually watch this man's content to make sure i'm not like you know because unfortunately there are people that you know liberty this liberty that or, you know, America or freedom. And then you go on and it's like, oh, wow, this guy's a communist or a Nazi or what? Like their concept of freedom is a lot different than ours. So I went on and checked it out and I'm like, yeah, this is really good. Not only do I agree with it, but it's good. And then that's when I talked with Matt about 
bringing you on. And I'm like, we need to have him on so that we're not just sharing each other's stuff, but like we're all working together. So I'm really glad that that you're on. Tell us a little bit about uh, what your for those who haven't seen Mr. America, the bearded tooth. First of all, shame on you guys but yeah, shame on you all shame just, on you know i, I don't want to say doors. i mean i don't want to say well i do want to say it shame on you every every episode i tell you to tune in for the shabbat episode of mr america the bearded truth i say shabbat shalom it's jason lyon he's gentile but it's still shabbat still shabbat to me uh and then i tell you tune in on monday and you haven't yet but for those who haven't we're going to give them a, a a pass for now Tell them a little bit about your show, what you do, and what you're what you're trying to accomplish with it. So if you take the muddy waters of freedom from Tuesday nights, um, the basic premise there, I'm I'm not nearly as funny as as Spike and Matt, but the idea is is to talk about the principles and the philosophies around the current events, maybe throw in some historical facts and and give right. a, a good understanding of what's really going on. And uh, to be able to to take all of these topics, the politics and the social issues, and bring them back down to the individual to where you should come away from these these discussions and feel as if either A, you're becoming more emboldened, or B, you feel as if the, the shackles have been tightened on you and you want to be emboldened, you want to be empowered and to be able to have uh, your liberty. Right, exactly. Much like much like what our founders wanted or or whoever else so very cool yeah no i i love watching your show i tune in whenever i can uh which is every single time guys so do you do it too um so this is in case anyone is just tuning in now this is the one year anniversary ish it's 363 one day it's the one year we're calling it the one year by next wednesday it will have already been more than one years it will be 1.01 years and so that just doesn't seem so. I'd rather do it on the 0.991 years. So the, for this one year episode, what we're what we're this one year anniversary, what we're doing is we have gotten a bunch of questions, and we apparently have more that are streaming in in the comments as well. So that's really cool. Uh, so we'll be we'll be uh, answering those as well as we get to to these. But we have a, a bunch of questions. So are you cool with starting off on these? Absolutely. Let's cool. uh, let's get into it. Cool. So how I'll do this is I will. Um, I'll ask the question who it's from and everything, and then I'll let you answer, and then I'll, I'll give my take. Or I'll just say I agree with you, because there's a good chance that'll happen a lot. Um, or I'll just say, yeah, let me say it a little bit differently, so I'm not just saying <laughs> yes over and over again. But basically, yes. yeah. So this first question uh, is uh, from a, a follower of ours on uh, Periscope. Um, and he says, or she says, I don't want to assume genders, but this individual person, human, says... Uh, I thought it would be interesting to discuss the libertarian slash minarchist view on veterans health care. I know you've covered it before, but maybe not like this, as the military is an essential part of the constitutionally defined government and many vets need care due to, due to their service. I can deduce some of the response. <laughs> I was speaking with a friend who unfortunately is a dem Democrat and is mired in basic arguments such as all things provided by the government is socialism, but it got me thinking about this at least. I know that one libertarian idea is to send funds into an account for use in the marketplace, which is interesting. Are there other solutions proposed by libertarians and minarchists? And do the minarchists and libertarians differ on those? And what of healthcare that is unrelated to military service? Where is the line drawn? What is covered? And there's a lot of questions in here, but it's all kind of the general yes. thing. Uh, what is covered now by the VA now seems complicated from an outside view. I was wondering if allocating funds, wouldn't the amount still need to be approved based on the type of care needed? Thank you. All right. So there, yes, lots of questions in there. I want to I <laughs> answer all of them right now, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to give some clarifying things there. Um, minarchism is actually is a part of libertarianism. There's right. Um, to give the quick umbrella. There's libertarianism. Treat that as the umbrella. Treat that the same as as a uh, uh, Christianity. Right. You have Catholicism. You have uh, Protestant under that. Oh, yeah. Um, with libertarianism, you have minarchism, which is small small minute government you have anarchism which is no government and then you have classical liberal so there's there's a spectrum there mm -hmm. um much like your genders um sorry. <laughs> or autism I, I yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and so 
within these, you have different varyings of, of how much government is supposed to be there. Now, when it comes to the military and, and that whole debacle and how we cover for healthcare, which is important, um, all three of them can easily, I think, agree on the idea of a voluntary system where, where we, the people, say, you know what, even, gov- even though it's your fault, government, for all these endless wars that we've been in, even though it's your fault that uh, so many of our troops have PTSD and are suffering um, eternally and, and committing suicide at very high rates, we can we can foot the bill by through voluntary means. Um, but as for as for the premise of how we do it within the, the confinements of the government, uh, that that structuring of of moving towards a, a school choice, if you will. Right. kind of uh, like system where the veteran gets to go and get health care in a private system, um, but is funded through the through the means of, of how the government would have been funding the VA. That would right. be a, a much better system than what we have now. Um, it, there's <laughs> the military being socialist. I, I agree with your friend. I, I, I have to. Um, <laughs> anything that the government really is is structuring and providing the means and and giving a lot of this a lot of the goods there um to the people i I, it's hard to dispute that it's socialism or that it's not socialism yeah yeah so my and and i i agree with that i i love how the premise of the question was prefaced with this is for minarchists i only want minarchist answer but i get it because the anarchist answer is I don't want any of this to happen, right? So I am an anarchist, but I can I am qualified to give minarchist answers. I have a minarchist uh, answering license um, Ooh. right here. Oi, you got a license for that? Yeah, I got, yeah. <laughs> I got a license right here. Um, Is it a napkin that says I do what I want? <laughs> yeah, I have this license. Uh, it's Canadian, uh, but I do have a license. Uh, it's fresh, and I uh, just got it in the mail. It says it's okay. You're gonna have to trust me on that. It does. It, what does it say? That? Well, this anyway, yes. Out. License. I'll this allow. This <laughs> Canada is a nation of laws, and I have all my licensing uh, in place. But so, the minarchist standpoint is that government is a necessary evil. It is evil, but it's necessary that it, it has to be kept to very basic functions and one of those is national defense that the purpose of a government is to protect uh, our property and our rights from those who would encroach upon it except for them uh but the uh and and that would be where the military comes in to protect us from foreign invasion or or uh or you know a domestic civil war or something like that um and so using that concept but but thinking of it as a libertarian if you're going to contract for someone to do something for you with the idea that what they're doing is going to be pretty intense and could be a lifelong thing and you're going to take care of any take care of any health problems that arise as a result of that. So if you hire me as a long you know for on a, a long-term contract to do construction work and I have a workers comp claim or an insurance claim during that time and it was contractually agreed upon ahead of time that you'd take care of that, then you owe that. So from that standpoint, you know, when people say, "Well, if you were you're an anarchist, would you cut veterans benefits? My my short answer is I'd cut a lot of things before I'd cut that because those are people that they need that and they they did something based on a contract. Uh, but yes, eventually in an anarchist world, all those things would go away. In short, in in in, in ha- still having that as a as an obligation, you got to take care of the 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 contractual obligation and. The best way to do that is as free market a plan as possible. So like Jason was saying, like looking at it like a, 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 a almost like the same way we look at school choice, you take that money and put it into either uh, uh, per per service pay care in the private sector or uh, through uh, health insurance or maybe actually probably maybe a system where you give a few options to the the veteran, to the patient for them to choose the best way to do it, that would open up competition. That's going to be a lot better because the VA isn't just single payer. Single payer is what they have in Canada. The government's paying for all the health care, but it's still most of the time being provided by private providers. The VA is even worse than that. The VA yes. is like the national health care system in Britain where the government runs health care. 
when you go to a doctor, you are going to a government employee who gets their marching orders from, no pun intended, from the government on what they're going to provide, what they're not going to provide, and whatever else. It seems like there's not a big difference there. It, there's a, a huge difference because there's no competition. In the single-payer system, uh, uh, I'm not Canadian, but my wife, who is Canadian, if she wanted to get health care here, she has choices of who to go to. The government's still paying for it, but she has doctors she can choose from. If we were in Britain, that would not be the case. You go to the doctor that they tell you to go to, and that is a huge, huge difference, and we see that in the VA. We see people... You don't see... How, when was the last time you heard of someone... I'm sure it's happened, but when was the last time you heard of someone committing suicide in the in the uh, the Blue Cross parking lot to protest, you know, insurance prices or, or being denied? Ha, it, has it maybe happened? Absolutely. I'm not saying it hasn't. The insurance system is definitely flawed and, and we can thank government for that as well. But yes. you haven't heard of that. I haven't... I've only heard of a couple cases that were similar where people have, you know, committed suicide over, you know, Canadian healthcare. It does happen. And again, that's a terrible system. We routinely hear at least a couple times a year of veterans killing themselves in VA parking lots and VA hospitals and VA healthcare providing uh, uh, centers and whatever because it's that bad. Yes. And they're even leaving notes spelling Saying it out, that's why, yeah. Saying exactly exactly so it's a terrible terrible system so if you're gonna provide it not only would it be cheaper but you'd be saving these people's lives these are people that often they go in as kids let's be serious here 17 18 years old yes you're you know actually at 17 you're not even legally an adult uh well i guess in some states you are but there are a lot of things you can't do at 17 you can sign yep. up for a long-term commitment to the government to f go overseas kill people, potentially die, potentially be maimed. There's a reason they're choosing them at that, that age because if you try to get someone Jason's age or my age, we're going to be like, yeah, no, I don't think so. It sounds good, but uh, maybe the, 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 the kid behind me will do that. Plus, There's I think some... on top of that, they, they've they seen our show and they know how often we get out for back injuries. They they don't want <laughs> Nobody wants the back injuries. <laughs> guys, I would love to, but my sciatica is really acting up. <laughs> uh... It's no, it's true. That's true. Um, but yes. And then, and then if they watch our shows, the back problems are the least of why they would not. Yes. Have us on the, yes. But, and but on yes. top of that, I mean, there was, there's recently a story going out there that they're looking to get kids even younger because they see that even at 17 and 18 with the way that social media has been interacting with or the way that people have been interacting with social media, right. they become more aware. Oh, yeah. And so the tar the audience that is susceptible to this has been shrunk. And and so they have to go to another level of, of ignorance, if you will. And uh, and so yes. they're, they're driving younger and younger. Eventually, you know, as soon as you come out of the womb, here comes the, the army recruiter and the, the marine recruiter fighting over who's going to get the, the foot stamp. It, oh, it, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Listen, I mean, the what ROTC starts at JROTC. That was like middle school. They're getting like yes. 12 and 13 year olds. Yes. And and and. Far be it from me to, I mean, you know, if it were, if it were a private sector company trying to get kids to join team Toyota or team, uh, I don't know, John Deere or whatever, like, you know, t you know, team Amazon or whatever, you know, that's fine. You get them young and you try to get them into it, but there's something to team be Bud said. About team Bud <laughs> Yeah. Listen, <laughs> if, if they can go and kill people, why can't they start drinking early too? Like, I mean, I, I, there was a, there was a meme someone shared where it said where this, this guy is at a bar. And he's or a, a you know it looks like a bar, and he's standing next to someone. He's got this beard like you, and he's all grizzled looking, and he's talking about his tours in Iraq and how he lost his buddy on the battlefield and all of this stuff and how terrible it was. And you know how he's just you know it's been years, and he's just trying to get by, and he's doing his best just to you know keep his head above water. And uh, and the other guy says, "Man, I'm so sorry you're going through that. Can I buy you a beer?" And the guy's like, "No, I'm sorry, I'm not 21. I can't drink yet." And it's and it's true. Yes. Like there are people like. 20 years old who have already lived some hard hard stuff and if literally any other organization except the government was subjecting people like this to this on a regular basis they would get shut down people would go to jail it would be called racketeering i get the whole yes. argument about the military i'm not i'm not trying to red pill well i am but i'm not trying to yellow black pill people actually i am 
I'm trying to yell at black kill people. Uh, but uh, but the out there now. We, it, it is what it is. Listen, I, you know, if you're watching this show, anarchy is nif- nifty. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it, it, it's just it's a it's a terrible it's a terrible thing. If you're gonna have them doing this, you you have to keep the obligation. And yes, I realize that means you're robbing people or you're running up debt or whatever. On the scale of things, when you look at Social Security, Medicare. The uh, the the Pentagon, the the new veterans they're creating, uh, not to mention all the people that the, all the trauma they're creating across the the world, those are the cost drivers. Long before you get to the VA, there are way other many other things that could be cut. Before we're talking yes. about making sure that a million you know, millions of people aren't dying and 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 committing suicide based on a contractual. A denial of a contractual obligation for their health care. So that that's my that's my minarchist take on it. But uh uh next uh a question was from Matt Wright. One said, one real quick one. Yeah, one, yeah, go ahead. One go real ahead. quick follow up before that. Um I, I wanna put this in perspective for a lot of people because we talk about the military and we talk about like, you know, how how drastic and, and how damaging it is, and I, I don't deny that at all. But at any given moment in, in the history of America, well, it, recent history, if you will. Um, only uh, roughly around 1% of the entire country is active or reserves. And so it is a small, small portion of the, of the, of the country. Right. And so putting that into perspective of what you were talking about with social security, more, there's more people on social security. There's more people on all those other forms of entitlements or welfare. And so if we want to shrink the government, we gotta, we gotta focus on those entitlements, um, those who are dependent upon the government not because right. of government but because of because of government just yeah <laughs> yeah no because of the, because of a combination of their choices and government um no yes. i agree and and uh this this lovely lady kelsey lyon uh said oh no peanut uh, gallery <laughs> the peanut gallery's here and she said uh they they can treat their get- veterans as guinea pigs because they have no choice and that's absolutely true I uh I have a friend that talked about how like before he went to Iraq they gave him all these shots and he like grew a foot and uh and no I he grew a foot in in height he didn't grow an extra foot um but that would have been, been cool I was like did that go to his third leg I like where where does that would have been go? oh that would have been scary huh um but uh uh it's a good conversation piece though uh but no sadly <laughs> he grew a foot in height and he's like he wow. got all muscular but then now he's dealing with like knee problems and stuff and it's like yeah you know i and 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 he you know his uh what he did without giving away too much he wasn't in combat he was doing essentially uh like a uh a, a, you know um maintenance stuff so it wasn't like he was basically a a mechanic um so his knee stuff isn't probably just as a result of that and uh you know it's so it's it's yeah. like you know you got to keep the obligation i we could we could spend a whole a whole episode on this but you got to keep the obligation so we've got two questions here it's kind of become a pile on uh matt wright says uh first time long time why is shane sweeney's beard better and then brent deritter uh up there in uh in north carolina says why do shane and jason have inferior beards i i'm just going to give you a moment to talk about Matt's beard since we're going there to Matt's beard. Yeah. Uh, Matt's beard. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on Matt's beard? Uh, Matt's beard. Uh, it's as impressive as, I don't know. Uh, I can't, I can't even think of something. So that lets you down so hard that you just <laughs> Matt's beard is the equivalent of VA healthcare. <laughs> oh wow matt's beard is the <laughs> va healthcare of that is a that is a hot take that'll be on our matt will put that in our best of muddied waters uh section of youtube um yeah no listen guys you know brent de ritter has a very impressive uh uh southern gentleman beard shane has a jovial bushy beard jason has yes. a beautiful straight mane and matt has the sheer audacity um I mean, like what, what are we doing here even i have a beer we now to, we also we we need to make sure that even though right now you are north of of the lands that we we refer to south carolina as the carolina and we refer to the one above us as the yankee carolina oh yeah let's do that yeah let's do that let's talk about brent de ritter uh, best carolina we have more waffle houses than you bro i i don't know why you want to compete with us there is that true it's 
You can't handle it. Yeah, we have like two more. Um, and hashtag we have way, yeah, but if you if you do that per capita, it's way higher because North Carolina has all yes. those all those Yankified cities up there, Charlotte and Raleigh. I see you people up there. Yeah, I go to um, Charlotte. I'm like, as, oh yeah, this is the South. As for the question <laughs> about the actual beards that are, are occurring in this world, uh, sorry, Matt, you're excluded from this conversation. Um, I might be salty. He fired me. Uh, <laughs> Spike was witness to that. Um, <laughs> we could get into that later, but we could definitely get um, into that. You know, which we will. When it comes when it comes to Brent Ritter and and Shane, they have they have nice amateur beards. They have beards that you know they let grow, and they they go and they water their beards. They might put some miracle grow in them and and look over into the greener pastures of of Jason Land and go. That's a really nice beard, and he takes care of it. Um, so I don't think that you could really, you don't look at somebody with a with a a lawn that hasn't been kept, um, and go. That's a much better lawn than the guy down the road who you know he goes out there and he he takes care of it, he straightens it, you know, takes just really loves it and nurtures his beard. And so uh, there there really isn't a competition here. Um, they I mean, may you, try you, to. You've you got to have goals. You have edge work on your beards, on your beard there. Like you're, you, you got a, a straight. As opposed to me, who has just let my Jew face, and and and, and to, to, to match. It, it, it's eventually going to connect. Like this is just the Jew. Uh, yes. It's it's our protection from the next uh, potential genocide. Is this hair so we can just. If you if you really and... I don't know if the quality is good enough, but when I say I have a mane, it actually does connect to the back of my head, and so yeah, um, here and do that again because when... you were you were you, you were on this one. Sorry. Oh yeah, you might be able to see it. I see it. Um, it de- it definitely comes together. I have an actual lion mane, like I embody this, and so uh, mine, dude. you know, this... it's nice for these guys to 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 compete. But I don't. I know. Wonder if mine does mine do that. No, no, but you get, but you it connects that. everywhere else. It connects down to my chest and back, and I, it's like a yeah. I have a chest beard. If we want to do it's beards, I have like a, I have a it's full... species of beast that just is is not common. And, no, uh, I'm you know, I'm I, I'm I've... devolved. Um, so <laughs> good. Well, we've addressed Matt's. Be- I mean, of all people, anyway. Um, so Christopher Ryan Clark, a regular watcher of ours, asks, "Do you think we will ever move away?" from our current party system. And I, I assume he means the like Republican and Democrat duopoly. Um, I think, I think whenever we have, whenever we look at these political parties, um, I hope that we would evolve, right? When we look at the European countries who we view as more outdated and whether they started before or their current government started before or after ours is really irrelevant right. um, because they're just outdated. Um, in general with their line of thinking they have multiple parties uh who was it It was was it spain that has like four different parties and so they basically don't have a government because they're just so incompetent um to be able to to really come to power and make things work you have that and then you have our two parties and and well i'm not sure if we're ever going to evolve ourselves but Something like a uniparty would be at least more honest, I think, for the people, and and so we should be pushing for that because there one is, party rule, at, right? When we look at the Democrats and we look at the Republicans, there's there really is no difference. They both want to grow the government just at different rates, just right. at different speeds, and at different different directions. Um, you, anyone who disagrees with this notion, please tell me why it is that that Republicans are more successful at pushing gun control than Democrats. Um, it, it just, it's, it's there. The yeah. evidence is there. Oh yeah. And, uh, so if we're going to evolve, hopefully it's the evolution in the way of volunteerism, um, in the way of libertarianism where we, we break down the rulers. There's, there's less control and centralized powers, right? We, we dismantle, um, 85, 95, maybe even 100% of what the federal government is today. Um, if they're there to, to protect the sovereignty of a nation, right? This is pragmatic speaking, not ideologically speaking. Right, but right, right. If they're there to protect the nation and the sovereignty of the nation, that should be their only scope. And then you move down to the state level and the state level, 
you know, they reduce some of their things and they move it down to the county level. And then eventually we get to where the point of of individual freedom and individual ownership and, and be the ruler of yourself that it's hard to argue against it. The idea that, you know, because you don't like your neighbor smoking the Mary Joannas, um, taking taking a hit of of ecstasy, take, you know, pop and Molly doing whatever it is that they're doing, doing um, the butt stuff don't like it doesn't mean that you get to to tell others to throw them into a cage um you know that's something that there's a victimless crime there and and so i think that in, in the grand scheme of things i hope that we would evolve in that way but the problem is, is that we don't ever have those evolutions in those ways in those ways usually those require catastrophic wars, such as you know what we're gonna what a lot of americans are celebrating tomorrow when we declared our independence and right. uh, had to fight a, a bloody battle against the brits um, so I think that the evolution, it, the more possible evolution is just changing the party names, but not changing the stances or figures. Yeah, no, exactly. Because that's the thing, like the Republicans and Democrats didn't exist when the party, when the country was first founded. It was the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists who really weren't present in yeah. politics because in, in, in the in electoral roles because they were against the whole thing. But you so you had the Federalist Party and then you had then it became like the the Democratic Republicans and things like that. And then the Whig Party. Uh yep. and, and and so it took a while before it wasn't until pretty much at and 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 just after the Civil War that you saw it kind of congeal around the Republican and Democratic parties. And then uh sometime I'm forgetting my dates, but sometime in the early twentieth century the Federal Election Commission came around to basically cement the Republican and Democratic parties as the two main official parties. And they uh, that's when they started adding all these crazy ballot access rules and everything else to make it nearly impossible for third parties to compete in any real way. Um, and so and when that happened, now all of a sudden there isn't as much competition. Now you see the daylight between the two parties shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. I say that today's Republican is last decade's Democrat. Donald Trump would have fit, did fit very squarely within the ninth, the, the early 2000s and 1990s Democratic Party. Many of his policies still fit within the Democratic Party. Many, you know, you, you see the two parties just kind of moving over to the left more and more. And as they do so, they're getting closer and closer and closer. And like you said, it would be way more honest to have a uniparty. So if there is yes. going to be a new party, uh, let it actually be something real. Um, Brenda Ritter says, Jason Lyons says, saying Pop and Molly was the most awkward thing I've ever heard. And that's that's not, not right. Bad. That's not no. But he's right. And and Matt said doing the butt stuff with the Molly. One of my favorite quotes from Jason <laughs> was he said, "If your neighbor's doing the butt stuff, just let them. You don't if you don't have to like it, but just let them do the butt stuff. They're not going to do stuff to your butt." And that and he's right. That's the if they way, do that's, the butt stuff to you, then then we have. I'll stand with you. Oh yeah, um, if they if they do the butt stuff to you, now they now we have problems. If they say we want to do butt stuff to you, we don't care if you like it or not. And that's an issue. All of this, by the way, should be the real Libertarian Party motto. Which brings us to our next question from an anonymous follower on YouTube: What the hell is up with the Libertarian Party saying that silence is consent? Speaking of butt stuff, uh, so Jason, give us a little because uh, uh, I. I came in on this like I think the day after it happened, and I tell for those of 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 of, the, of, of our followers who have no idea what we're talking about, give us a little bit of background on this, and then and give us a, your take on it. So the LP National is once again making itself kind of a a, a disgrace, and and it sits there and does things like puts out a tweet and says, "Look, if you don't vote, silence is consent. Um, you consent to the big government that we have," and. And then they wonder why the LP is not gaining people. They wonder why the states don't back and support um, their platform on everything. It, they, the problem with, so as I explained, the context was if you don't go out and vote, right. if you don't go out and cast your vote and to wish your will upon others, um, then you consent to them in the way that they vote upon you. 
Um, <laughs> this has been something that libertarians and the libertarian party has been opposing for forever. Right. Um, and their party platform, they say, you know, if we don't speak on certain topics, if we don't speak on certain issues, if our platform doesn't cover these things, just because we don't say it doesn't mean that we consent to it. But exactly. Damn you individuals. If you guys don't support the state by voting for the state, um, if you don't vote to save your shoes, then you are complicit in, in, in all of that. <laughs> And I, I understand the argument, but putting it out there in that way and, and having that specific quote, silence is consent. Bill Cosby and Cardi B both were cheering. They were um, loving it. They were it's, loving it's, it. Yeah, I yes, it's it's absolutely insane. So like you said, I get what I think they may have been trying to say, which is like, if you don't participate, then... It's still going to happen to you. So it would be helpful to like, for example, I, I forget one of the philosophers said, you don't have to take an interest in politics. Politics takes an interest in you or something like yes. that, it, which yep. is true. Like, you know, we're in a system. The state is a system of forced association. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. You are literally not required to like it, at least not yet. North Korea, you are required yeah. to like it. But here, yes. you're not required to like it yet. Um, and so, but you still have to do it. You still have to pay the taxes. You still have to follow the rules. You still have to do all of those things. And if you get caught not doing it, uh, you might get in trouble. You might have some, some problems. Uh, they might do the butt stuff to you. Honestly. Um, you want to talk about, I mean, the, the government loves doing the butt stuff. This oh, is the they love the butt stuff. They'll put you in cages and make sure that the butt stuff happens to you. They love the butt stuff so much. This is the butt stuff episode now, by the way. That's what we're calling it. One year anniversary butt stuff episode. Um, <laughs> they will, what a great they, way to celebrate. <laughs> bring it in the stuff. year with butt stuff. Um, I love that your wife is watching this too. Um, but anyway, mine definitely is not. So I can say whatever I want about butt stuff. But anyway... Uh, the way that that was worded was garbage. Mm -hmm. Silence is your silence is consent. Every rapist on earth, you know, when we see rape on TV, it's like this violent, like ah, I'm gonna rape you, and then the and then the woman's like, no, don't rape me. And it's like that's not. I mean, that does happen. The vast majority of rapes are not like that. They're the so-called date yeah. rapes where there's a lot of coercion and a lot of like, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. This is okay, right? This is okay. And the woman just kind of shuts in emotionally. She might say no once or twice, but then for the most part, she's just kind of waiting for it to end and so that it doesn't become a, you know, a violent, angry thing. And she's horrified and goes through that for the rest of her life. And there are men that get raped yeah. as well. I'm not, I'm not saying it's just women, but silence is not consent. Yeah. There is such a thing as what compl it, compliance make under it clear duress. For anybody? Go ahead. Can we make it really clear for anyone? Consent is consent. <laughs> silence is silence. Yes. Yeah. It it don't was a, go, don't conflate things. It's and it was a terror. It's a horrible look, and it was it was aimed at a group of people who are all about consent. I I believe that was aimed at you know radical libertarians who are like you know voting is proxy violence and all of that stuff anarchists mm -hmm. and things like that i don't think it was aimed at angry republicans or democrats i think it was aimed at people that are like well you know i support liberty but i don't think voting really helps and they go well you know your silence is consent that is like literally the last group of people that that argument would work on it was so tone deaf mm -hmm. and tin-eared that you're presenting yourselves and 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 you are as I mentioned, the, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the chair of the Greenville, uh, County party. So you're a mm -hmm. part of the libertarian party on a, on a local level, but you're a part of the party and yes. you're trying to present the libertarian party as a real alternative, not just Republicans who like, who like drugs or, or in butt stuff <laughs> Democrats or who like guns. De Democrats who like guns and Republicans who like drugs and butt stuff. It's, it's, you are, you're, you're, you're all of those things and more. You're an actual, uh, uh, you're an actual third party presenting a completely radically different idea of how society, how people within a society, which we yes. live in, uh, can, can cooperate with each other for scarce resources and to create and to, and to, to how much easier does that message make your job? Silence is consent. Oh, it, it's 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 incredibly difficult, and I think Dave Smith really says it right. Um, one of the quotes from him, I believe he was the originator of this, um, so don't quote me on quoting him. Um, but it was that I'm a better conservative than any conservative, and I'm a better liberal than any liberal. Uh, we are the better 
choices of any any idea out there and and so when we advocate for that um you know the lp national putting out that silence is consent there's there's you know like what we were talking about there's there may be some little bit of truth to the idea that you know if you're not voting then you know you get what's coming to you Don't which is a valid that. argument it's a valid argument yes yeah, but the way that they could have framed that and the way that they could have portrayed that message, they could have reached people and been like, look at how many people are not voting. How many people would be willing to put out their name and say, look, I don't vote because I know I don't get representation. I know that no matter how I vote, the government continues to grow. No matter right. how I vote, the government will still work against my best interests. No matter what happens, no matter who is in office, no matter what laws are enacted, I am no no more safe, nor no more uh, free. Right. And, exactly. And being able to put that out there and just show those stark numbers, because if we look, if 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 Democrats get their way in the way that they've been pushing for a popular vote in this country, if we look at how many people don't vote and we count those as a, a as a quote unquote no to vote and none of the above vote. Right. Nobody wins ever. Nobody ever wins in this country. Right. Yep. I absolutely. Absolutely. And, and go ahead. So they, they spin it as get raped instead of hey guys what could, could we care about each other could we stop just destroying each other's lives just for a political gain because my my team is better than your team yep exactly exactly oh. it's 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 absolutely absurd i don't know what it is that they were trying to what it is that they were trying to say with that i think it was again it was so tinnered and tone deaf um so incidentally guys this is um I got a I got a hot tip. What uh, on uh, while this was going on from uh, a a a Ms. Kelsey Lyon, or I guess Mrs. Kelsey Lyon. That would be that would be my my that's right there is my blow dryer. That's one of my beard brushes. There's another beard brush in there. That's my hair gel, my beard products, and that's my straightener right there. Yes, I will admit that I take care of my beard. Um, that's a beard balm. I also have. Or no, that's a. Uh, that's I'm having a to scroll effect. this photo. That's like, I mean, this is serious, yeah. guys. This is serious. This is if why want, my beard is better than than Shane and Brent's together. If you want a beard, not like this, not like this freaking homeless Jew pirate mess here. But if you want what you're seeing in the bottom right there, you got to do all this every day. And then your your wife can send me photos of it, and we'll we'll put that'll be a new thing on the show. Um, so that, that was it when she said I'm sending that. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm definitely going to show that live. Um, so I have no good segue, so we're going to do it. Hey guys, are you looking to make a podcast? Well, Anchor FM is the easiest way to make a podcast. Anchor gives you everything you need in one place for free, which you can use right from your phone or computer. It has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast, so it sounds great. Uh, They uh, will distribute your podcast for you uh, so it can be heard everywhere. Uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many, many more. Uh, Pretty much all of the different things. If you want to be on all the podcast things, they will put you on the podcast things. Um, They will... uh, You can easily... uh, Can I ask what's the minimum membership? Oh, 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 I'm glad you asked. Because uh, you can make money easily from your podcast with no minimum listenership. No... No minimum listenership. I know. It's insane. So guys, if you're looking to make a podcast, be sure to download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started and be sure to let us know and we'll check it out. And if you are not Nazis, we'll like your thing and give it a good review and you can give ours or communists. Just don't be terrible people. If you're not terrible people, we'll give you a good review and give us a good review. Another cool thing about Anchor is they let you get these nifty, well, two things. They let you get uh, donations from your 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 peoples uh and they also uh let you get these really cool voice notes and we have two voice notes from our longtime uh uh patron and viewer personal injury attorney chris reynolds attorney at law uh chris reynolds attorney at law chris reynolds attorney at law do you know about chris reynolds attorney at law i know uh, i've heard of chris reynolds attorney at law how is Chris Reynolds attorney at law? Oh, he's an attorney at law. That's how he's doing. He's <laughs> he's he's doing a he's doing a turn and lickly at law. Um and uh 
So personal injury attorney. So guys, if you are in Florida, be sure to check out and you have a personal injury of some kind, want to sue someone for it, check out personal injury attorney, Chris Reynolds, attorney at law. He has two questions. The first one, well, I'll let him talk about it. Personal injury attorney, Chris Reynolds here with your AOC Millennial Minute. So the Electoral College has been much maligned recently, and I wanted to hear kind of the libertarian slash Matt and Spike's view on the Electoral College. And Jason, Electoral College, Jason. I think Matt, is Spike intended Jason. To, to reserve power to the states over the federal government in a sense. Um, so it would seem to be something that libertarians would favor over other methods of um, electing a president. Uh, however, I don't know. Um, so do you guys favor the Electoral College over something else? And if it is something else, what would that something else look like? Thank you. So we had this, thank you, Chris. We had this uh, question uh, last night on the Money Waters of Freedom, but I wanted to get your take on it as well um, for this episode. So uh, give, give us your take on the Electoral College versus the, I guess, the alternative, the national popular vote. So um, this is something that I've covered, I, I think the most recent time was maybe maybe a month or two ago. But the, the basic premise here is, do you want to have mob rule or do you want to have, repre- have actual representation? We all know from if you watch Fox News, if you read any of the mainstream media, if you pay attention at all, that we can have just a couple few counties across this country be able to dictate over the rest of us so um, moving in the way of of a straight democracy via the uh the bills that have been going through from the different states that is actually going to be tearing at at the integrity of this country as well as uh reducing your ability to vote um i think oregon was the most recent state to sign on to that bill and basically what the what all these states that have signed on to it are saying my people don't matter they don't care um i want california new york washington dc and florida to be able to vote for whoever they want and we'll right. have to just abide by their their policies um and so what that means is that anybody running for congress or sorry running for the presidency all they have to do is go to those three or four areas and then they can win yeah now yeah. if you're a democrat you're guaranteed if you're a republican good luck on that if you're a libertarian hopefully we could get to that three percent again um right sorry exactly. Gary. exactly yeah <laughs> um so moving towards the electoral college that's a, a a very it's a better idea it's a better system in the way of electing people um because that way no state is quote unquote too small to to make a difference now wyoming and alaska of course they don't with their what two votes um they aren't really swinging anything but they at least have somewhat of a say um, in, in a, but it, to be fair in a close election they could really swing things like in, in, a, in yes. it where it's down to a couple points it's those smaller states that really matter so so potentially yeah yes um you know meanwhile california swinging with the the 55 inch uh Pataliwacker, if you will um you know it, they for the butt for the butt stuff yes for the butt stuff of course <laughs> san fran need i say more right. um so the electoral college is a better system it's a better idea of course the government that is uh that it is enabling or you know the the office that is going into that government um via the electoral college that of course needs to be pulled away and torn down but um, right. The Electoral College is a much better system than than straight mob rule, than straight democracy. Democracy doesn't work. It right. never works because it, it, mob rule. Right, exactly. And that's just to kind of give my take from, from yesterday. I'll give it a little bit. I think I talked a lot about this mm-hmm. yesterday, so I'll, I'll give a, a little shorter take. But basically, the purpose of the Electoral College was that coming out of the uh, Articles of Confederation, which were the, origi- the, the original... Uh, constitution, if you will, the original charter for the government uh, coming after the Revolutionary War. That was the original American government. It had a very, very weak uh, federal government. They had no ability to tax. They had no ability to declare war. They had no ability to raise an army. That was up to the individual states. Um, it was a very, it was a, actually a minarchist dream if you were trying to make a, a, a truly minarchist government was the Articles of Confederation. 
Mm -hmm. That was replaced with the Constitution, which actually created a much more centralized government than what was in the Articles of Confederation. One of the many compromises, uh, one compromise was the so-called Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments, which, you know, uh, basically said, well, we're still going to ensure the rights of uh, of the people, not just American citizens, but of all the people within our presumed jur jurisdiction, have all of these rights. Uh, and um, and any and in the Tenth Amendment says any power not given to the government is delegated to the states or the people themselves. All of that to say that one of the other compromises was that was the assurance that each state was still an independent, an autonomous, or at least semi-autonomous nation state working in a confederation or federalization with other states. And part of that was that to elect a national, uh, a, 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 a national person to preside over that government, not to rule it, to preside, that's what a president does, to preside over yes. that government and to basically do whatever Congress uh, has given him to do, he executes it. The way that was going to be chosen was not all the people as one nation were going to choose that president. It was that each state was going to choose who they wanted as president. And they got, based on their population, a certain amount of electoral college votes and so forth. So it wasn't just, yes, it was to protect the smaller states from just being road roughshod on by the bigger states. But it, more important, but it, at least as importantly, it was to say that these are individual nation states making their individual nation state choice for who they wanted as president. A national popular vote does away with all of that and says, no, we are one nation, like like the, the Pledge of Allegiance that was created by the uh, uh, socialist white supremacist Francis Bellamy's, you know, one nation indivisible. That's actually not... We weren't supposed to be one nation or indivisible. We were supposed to be, yes. uh, at that point, 13 nations, now 50 nations, completely divisible at any time. Uh, but thanks to Francis Bellamy and Abraham Lincoln, no, not so much. They'll kill you. Um, and so, but the compromise, again, is that the individual states are making that choice. National popular vote does away with that. Here's what I will say. Two things. One is that the Electoral College, term limits, all of these things are ways of acknowledging that we are scared of our neighbors and don't like the idea of them deciding stuff for us. It is an implicit acknowledgement that democracy is garbage and that we should just do away with it. Anyway, the second part of that, I feel like this is becoming as long as my answer yesterday. Uh, but the second part of that is that it's good if, content. what's that? I said it's good content. Continue. Well, thank you. I like to give good content. The other part of that is if you were going to have a national popular election, then it shouldn't be just a first past the post that whoever gets the most, uh, you know, wins. At that point, if you're going to go that way, it should be one of these, like how they have in, in other countries like uh, Israel and in some of the, uh, I think it's the Scandinavian countries, where instead of it's just whoever gets the highest percentage wins, you have uh, what they call ranked uh, voting or uh, what's the word, uh, plural elections and things like that, where uh, where it's done based on, well, this party got this many votes, so they get this many seats, this party gets this many seats. This would do a couple things. First of all, it would make people less scared of voting for third and fourth parties um, because it would mean that they wouldn't just lose their vote to whoever got you know the, the most votes. Um, and then the other thing it would do is it would still give a semblance of individuals and, and voting groups voting together and there are some that would argue that that's actually better than the electoral college because i would be sharing my votes not just with people in my state but with people around the country who share my common values all of that to say that i think all of these systems suck uh but i if i had to pick between just electoral college or the national popular vote for, with first past the post it would be electoral college definitely because there's at least some some level of of quote unquote protection there uh, and then here... there was another idea of Go ahead. voting Go ahead. that I want to share with you guys. I, and, and so there's a, a system called ranked voting yes. where you're going to vote and you're going to, let's say you have four candidates. You could vote candidate A, B, C, and D. Candidate A, you really like. Candidate B, you really like, but you know, they're a libertarian, so why waste my vote? Um, candidate C is a commie and candidate D is a socialist, so we know that they're getting no votes. Um, so you're, you're, you're fighting between those two. And, and so the way that you could structure that is you have five points. So you right. want to give candidate a, who you think is going to win. You give him four points. 
right. candidate B, who you love, who's a libertarian, who's, you know, fighting for you to be free, to, to have, live your life the way you want, um, to, for you to be, uh, more able to be successful in whatever it is that you are doing. So you give them five points. So now you're still voting for who you think will win, but you also get a vote for who you want to win and who better represents you. Hmm. And, and so by moving that way, um, less people will just like what you were talking about less people will be scared to to go out and vote for that that the underdog if you will. right the one that because because that's a that is a huge hurdle with libertarians is okay great you've never hit double digits so if i vote for you yeah my greater evil whether it's a democrat or republican is gonna lose yeah. Or gonna win, and my my lesser evil that I would have voted for is gonna gonna lose. And so you really first before they vote for you, you have to sell them on the idea that they both are essentially equal evils that suck, and that continuing to vote for one of those two uh, is just going to ensure that they continue to become more evil together. Um, and but that's a harder There's sell than saying, "Hey, give us a chance." Um, yeah, there's two things I want to say real quick. Yeah, so yeah, go the ahead. first one is that everyone goes into the circular logic. They right. say the libertarians can't win because nobody votes for the libertarian. So I won't vote for the libertarians because the libertarians won't win. And right. and so you right. just run right. around in that circle all day and, and year in and year out. And right. That's, of course, a big issue. Now, like kind of how you you started touching on it a little bit. Right. If I vote for a libertarian and I would rather have a Republican win then it's kind of a vote for the Democrat because I'm not voting for the Republican. Right. Well, Democrat would also say that if you vote for Libertarian, then you're voting for a Republican. So my thought is, why don't you triple the power of your vote? <laughs> vote for a Libertarian because then you're voting for a Libertarian. By the Democrats' view, you're voting for the... By voting for a libertarian, you're voting for a Republican. So there, there's your second vote. And then Republicans say you're voting for a Democrat. So just just vote one time and you get three effective votes maximized voting i love it i love it it's a new it's a new take on the chicago way of voting early and often you just vote the once and it's a triple vote um yeah. that's funny yeah i mean it's it is a hard sell because you're you're talking about you know it's not like it's close where it's like well we 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 got 38 point with 38 percent last time it's like yeah we got three percent so it's a it's a tough sell but you're right it really comes down to the circular logic of like well, are they going to do it too? All right. Well, if they don't do it, I'm not doing it either. And so you got to kind of, it really comes down to at this point saying to them, yeah, look, both of them suck. So yeah, you can either stop voting because you know, you're going the full anarchist route, or even if you're an anarchist, you can try voting for someone who also uh, agrees with that. So yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with that. And then we get, we have one other question from Chris, which is right no wait that's the oh good oh here it is yeah personal injury attorney chris reynolds here with your weekly bernie bonanza <laughs> wanted to see if the guys would uh talk a little bit about um what is starting to feel like the the central issue on at least the democratic side of the presidential debate which seems to be Medicare for all. Um, it wasn't that long ago that we had the Affordable Care Act, and there was a pretty big divide on that, whether or not you know we should be allowing government to force people to do things, um, like enter into this, and we have the, you know, the public option and all that, and we've gone way past that now at this point. And so I would love just, you know, obviously libertarians are not going to like any of that stuff, but, you know, just a discussion of the pros and cons of a system that is being proposed. Thank you. Pros and cons of Medicare for all. Okay. So pros. <laughs> Unbiased pros and cons. All right. Now. now. All right. So pros of Medicare for all. Um, from my bias, we're done with that list. Um, from, from. <laughs> A, a trying to be as objective as possible, um, having it, ignoring the taxation, ignoring you becoming a slave to the system, ignoring right. the, the failures of our government running anything. Um, Medicare for all would be something that would be able to provide health care to millions of people, um, millions of Americans. Um, it, it would be something where 
even if you couldn't afford it, even if it wasn't something that was really feasible for you, um, it would then become available to you. And so they're, 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 it's a good intention. Um, cons of this, in reality, like I said, you become a slave to the system. You're going right. to have to spend an exorbitant amount of money. Um, and by spend, I mean stolen. And exorbitant, I mean even more than exorbitant. I don't know a word that's bigger than that. Um, <laughs> butt stuff. Butt stuff. Butt You're stuff. Pay yeah, it's butt, butt stuff, stuff amount. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and and so it's going to cost a crap ton of money right um the right. ways that single payer from from most of the candidates in in every democratic candidate out there that's espousing um support and advocating for medicare for all has kind of a different stance on it right some right, of them are right. taking quote unquote more pro pragmatic some of them are just jumping straight in to the ideological thing um but to generalize them to blur them all together um, the way that this is going to work is they're going to cut down costs. How are they going to cut down costs? Well, they're going to pay the people less. They're going to pay the, the facilities less. There's going to be yeah. less funding to, uh, to ensure the quality of, of the buildings and the structures and the equipment. Um, there's going to be less funding for the doctors. There's going to be, um, no insurance. There's going to, uh, they're going to cut, they're going to strangle, the providers of the healthcare and hope that we don't follow the way that Cuba went. Um, where in, in Cuba, when they, when they pushed a national healthcare system, um, all the doctors weren't making as much money as they were before. So doctors started leaving the Island. They started leaving the area. And when they started leaving, there was less doctors providing more work for less money. And so now you're getting to where they have, uh, insanely long wait times. Nobody's getting seen. And it's just, it's just a failure all around. Um, so they're hoping not to replicate it, even though they're going down the same road um, with that regards. When it comes to this, if we look at the way that uh, Britain's got their uh, national health services, yes. NHS, um, yeah. you do have the quote unquote death panels. You do have the oh, yeah. you've yeah. reached your life expectancy. And so therefore you're cut off from us providing you these services and goods. Um, sorry that you need a simple surgery. We may have somebody that's available to give this to you. They may have an opening somehow. Um, we may have extra prosthetic knees, but sorry, you've made it to your life expectancy. You're cut off. Yeah. Um, so the quality of healthcare goes down. The cost of healthcare, they they keep it down, which means that the quality drives down even fa faster. But it's quote unquote universal unless you don't meet the criteria. So or, or you need it right now. Oh yeah, if you need it right now, then sorry. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy yep. your your long stay times, and this is something that happens. I haven't found um, really any country out there, and, and maybe you know one, Spike, um, of any country that has quicker wait times on average across the board than what America has, or or other private or pub not not public but private uh, healthcare. Um, I, 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 I I'm sure there are. I would assume it would be the smaller, wealthier countries. So if you look, the reason that the people that push this stuff always love to go to Scandinavia and Canada is because Scandinavia and Canada are both unique in that they are resource-rich, resource wealthy countries with small populations that their resource-to-per-capita to ratio is through the roof and even then they have problems. They have wait time problems. They have cost overruns. They have all sorts of issues with what is essentially their version of Medicare for all. Let's be very clear what they're proposing. They're not proposing Medicare for all, even though that's what they're calling it. Medicare, the government pays 80%. Uh, the seniors who are in it uh, and, and people who are disabled pay 20%. Most of them get a wraparound insurance that pays it, but they're paying that 20% one way or the other. It's paid for 80% by Medicare. It is an incredibly lavish system. It's one of the best healthcare systems you can get in the U.S., which is why the cost overruns are through the roof, even though they're only covering about, I think, 15% of the population right now. In order to be able to scale that out to all of us, we're not getting Medicare. We're getting Medicaid. The government pays all of it, and it's going to suck. And it's going to suck for everyone. There was a study done recently. I I don't remember if it was on Medicare or Medicare or Medicaid, but but um, I hope you would you'd be able to to 
fact check which one it was. Um, but they they did a blind study and figured out there's no change in the results. You have no difference from if there's no no advantage to being on the government provided one. And and so without an advantage, why am I going to be subsidizing everybody else? Why is it that my paycheck is not my own? Why is it that we are responsible for one another when we don't get to um, control or limit um, the choices that other people make? Now, pulling away from just the providing of, of healthcare, um, when we look at how people live, right? When we mm -hmm. look at, at places like California or Hawaii that are looking to ban cigarettes, that's not enough. We got to ban sugar. We yep. got to ban booze. We got to yep. ban, um, you know, ban the cigarettes. I, I, I'm drinking a beer right now. This needs to get banned. Um, <laughs> Drink it We fast. need to make sure that nobody is driving too fast. Nobody is driving at all. Nobody is going out in the sun. Nobody is doing anything outside of laying in their bed. And even in bed, they need to be wrapped up in bubble wrap. And, and Lysol spray needs to be sprayed around them at all times to, to make sure that my money is being protected. Because yep. if you're going to steal my money... I want as little of my money taken as possible. Yep, exactly. After progressives pass Medicaid for all, conservatives will start passing lifestyle choice and, and progressives, but they will both start passing lifestyle laws, which they will package as fiscal conservatism. In order to cut costs, you're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to eat too much of this because it causes higher rates of illness. You're not allowed to smoke. To forget smoking. You're not allowed to smoke. You're not allowed to drink. But you're, you know, sugar. And, oh, and by the way, because government decides things based on what lobbies tell them to do, you're now going to have the dairy industry, the sugar industry, the corn industry, the rice industry, every freaking indus soybean industry. All of them are going to be saying, this is the diet of the people that you must push as law. Yep. In order for them to, you know, to, in order to keep costs low and they'll use whatever skewed data, bribery and outright graft and everything else to get it passed. And it won't be long before they'll say, oh, yeah, here's your soy, you know, drink for the day because, you know, uh, uh, we'd much rather you, you know, have high levels of phytoestrogens and stay calm than, you know, eat something that feels good, but might, you know, might cause, you know, saturated fat buildup in your arteries or whatever. Um, tells you how much I know about this stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, and, and I can tell you right now, it's going to be a carb heavy diet because corn, big corn uh, owns the government. So you're eating a lot of freaking carbs, a lot of corn syrup, a lot of vegetable oils. It's not going to be a good diet, but it'll be a diet that won't kill you immediately. And uh, it will be also a diet that will make you want to die immediately. Um, so it's uh, it's it's a t it's a terrible thing, and it all creeps towards what will eventually happen, which is VA for all. After Medicaid for all, the cost overruns are still through the roof. People are making less money be because let's let's see. I mean, you got to go down the wormhole here. We talk about taxes. Yeah. Taxes aren't just income taxes. They're they're, they're corporate taxes. They are also income taxes, but they're not just what you pay in income taxes. They're what every single other person in the chain of things that you purchase because all, all taxes are paid by the consumer. Tariffs, income taxes, corporate taxes, levies, regulations, fines, fees, blah, 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 blah. Name all the different yep. taxes, property taxes. All of them are paid, not just the sales tax. All of them are paid by the end consumer of whatever that product is, which is disproportionately the poor and working class. The poor and working class all consume more than they produce. So you're putting it disproportionately on them. And when that fails, now we're not in Medicaid for all. We're in VA for all. We're in government run healthcare to keep costs low. And that's when you have a situation like Britain where they're banning freaking steak knives. I mean, this is where it goes. These things can't be talked about in vacuums because they're all together. It is the creeping yep. goal of the state to control everything. I, I have a chair that does this, so I get to do everything <laughs> about you. I'm not going all the way around because I think I'm going to hit this thing here. But everything about you. I love the I love the special effects I get to do with this chair. Um, the state controls you 
more and more and more. And they use stuff like, well, they want to, why can't we give, er socialism begins with questions like, why can't we give everyone health care? And ends with questions like, when are we going to start eating the zoo animals? And, yes. uh, and, and, and that's, that's, yes. that's where we're headed. Like, and it's a real question when, when you're in Venezuela, why do we have a zoo right now? No one can afford to go to the zoo. Why aren't we eating the zoo animals so we don't die? Yeah. When stray cats and dogs are on your diet, uh, you know, your country's gone to shit. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. Shithole. Let's use, let's use the proper term terms. Uh, <laughs> the prop the um, proper administration term. Exactly. But it's, it, you know, like you were saying, right, we move towards the VA healthcare for all. And once we get there, um, right now we have 22 veterans per day committing suicide. Now that's, again, that's 1% of the population active in reserves at any given moment. Right, right, right. And, and so we're, let's say there's another 2%. Um, so let's say 3% of the population, 22 per day. Now multiply that times 33. Um, but of course, veterans are a completely different beast than the average citizen, than an average civilian. The, the right. way that you get into the military, there is a different, um, you're just a different kind of a person. It's just the way that you conduct yourself and the way that you handle yourself. Um, right. People are, are inherently different. And um, I, I am a firm believer that a lot of people that have made it through the military, through training and through that that process, um, that a, a vast majority of them are stronger mentally and, and for them to commit suicide um, compared to some civilians. Oh, yeah. Um, it, Something's the number wrong. would be exponentially grow. Yeah, something is. Oh, of course. Yeah. If you if you took exactly right, if you took what veterans are being exposed to and subjected it on the greater population which by the way that's why you then see the euthanasia euthanasia stuff get pushed because you're going to see for the good of humanity millions of people choosing to be put down in a more humane way than you know blowing their brains out okay great why couldn't we instead have a free market system where people are getting care they need at an affordable rate the same way they can go buy furniture or go buy electronics at ever decreasing rates because the market is largely left alone by the state to, to constantly innovate and make newer, cheaper, better things. Why not have Televisions that? Televisions are a great one. Tele Freaking TVs get cheaper and cheaper computers. I struggled so for like a year to buy a new computer because they just kept getting better and cheaper. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, if I buy it now, six months from now, it's going to be, you know, Twice as good for, you know, 300 bucks less. And it's, why can't we have that with healthcare? Why can't yeah. we have that with everything else by simply letting uh, 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 people off the, this government hook? Um, anyway, I, I, you know, we can go back and forth on this forever. I have a, and this is going to be a hot take question for you, um, Jason. Uh, yeah, hot take. I it just came in. Uh, Shane Sweeney says, this question's for Burnt Beard Lion. Uh, which you know what is this what we're doing is this, anyway what's he says what's the best case scenario for the trump administration regarding making peace with iran we're putting 30 seconds on the clock good luck what's the best situation for them to make peace with iran how like get the hell out of the middle east i don't if we look at if we look at the reasons why like the conflicts and the issues that have been in the Middle East, um, our foreign policy has been entirely destructive. Um, you know whether it's it's trying to do like what we saw from um, okay buzzers up buzzers buzz, during... buzz, buzz, buzzers up buzzers up or buzzers oh, down come on. yeah so <laughs> the answer is. very little um i so i, very I little, you know. yeah i mean i'll let i'll let you finish i just i like using that jeopardy thing with each episode go ahead <laughs> no you're fine um so if we look at if we look at what uh congressman ryan did said during the debates and and i don't remember if you guys covered this on the show or not but congressman ryan and tulsi gabbard on the first night of the democratic debates um 
we saw where we don't know what we're doing in these areas. We don't even know what groups are doing what, even though it's been made clear by the media, it's been made clear by by uh, all these countries. Everyone knows that it was not um, the Taliban who flew the planes into our buildings. Oh, yeah, um, right, right. But we, we just are like, you're brown people. Let me get my John Bolton stash on and... Uh, will justify whatever it is that we want to do. And and certainly when it comes to the Iran situation, if we look at the way that they've been functioning lately, they're taking defensive measures and they're taking it in an aggressive way. Right. And, and can you blame somebody who l- let's you're sitting in your house right now, wherever you are, hopefully <laughs> right. you're not on the road or, or uh, at work or something right. for all you viewers, but you're sitting in your home and now your neighbor from, not down the street, but two towns over, sends over his buddies. And so they're like sitting right outside your neighbor's houses. They're looking right at you. Um, You can see them pointing to a sniper who's looking at your house. Uh, You know, you can see a team of mortars over on the, over the horizon. And then you see this little drone flying around you and you're like, I feel really safe right now. No, you would become defensive. And so we have taken all of these measures there with Iran to, to really just be like, we're going to bully you without trying to go onto your property. Even though I, when it came to that drone, I know that there is, there's a big dispute. And even one of the members of the Trump administration had said that there's a question on if it went into Iranian airspace and then came out and then was 21 miles outside of it. Um, We've done a lot of shit to Iran, and Iran's just like, hey, we can blow up, we can destroy the oil trade coming across us. We can, we could do a lot of things right now. Get the hell out of our backyard. Leave us alone. Like, leave us alone. They're not threatening to attack the U.S. They're saying, leave us the hell alone. We're talking about whether they were five miles on this side of international wild, mile uh, waters or four miles on this. International waters, correct me if I'm wrong, is like 50 miles out from the shore. This is a drone. 12. Is it 12? 12. We're talking a freaking short drive. Of, well, you can't drive on the ocean, but like we're talking like a 20 <laughs> minute boat trip, 30 minute boat trip off of the shore of Iran, of their homeland. A freaking military drone hovering over maybe possibly crossing in or out leave them the hell alone i love your 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 analogy with you know your neighbors sending people to fly drone imagine if you're america whatever country you're in imagine a government that is exponentially larger and more powerful than your government and they have bases in pretty much all the countries that surround you and their politicians are constantly talking joking and seriously talking about blowing the crap out of your country and killing you and your friends and neighbors for having a weapon for, for trying to get a for allegedly trying to get a weapon that they have thousands of imagine the mindset you'd be in and they're flying drones constantly. Just maybe, maybe they cross in, maybe they didn't cross in. And you know, they're, they're, they're using espionage and hacking tools to try to destroy your nuclear plant. You would be pissed the hell off. There are people watching this who unironically want to kill millions of Iranians because, like, they chant death to America. Why the hell do you think they're chanting death to America? They want you to leave them the hell alone. They yeah. don't want to... They want you to leave them the hell alone. So let's leave them the hell alone. Uh, yeah, Kelsey's- and the Iran, the Iran leader even, he said something that was really, really powerful. He had said, you know, when they had acknowledged that they've... In, or uh, exceeded what the threshold of allowable uh, nuclear energy in right. our country for armaments. They, he basically said, hey, look, America, can you tell us which country in this entire world has ever utilized a nuclear bomb? Right. Yeah. Looking at you. Yep. How's Japan feeling right now? You guys are the only ones, and yet you guys want to be the bully and not allow anyone else to be able to defend themselves against weapons that you have utilized against other foreign nations yeah. when they were on the, the brink of surrendering before the first bomb was dropped, and then you dropped a second one just to make sure that the, the message was sent. Yeah, exactly. Exa- it's, it's, it's just, it's absurd. Oh, and the reason they did that was because they knew no one else could bomb them. Right? Like they knew no one else could attack them. The very second one other country had a nuke, that was the end of that. Yeah. 
there hasn't been a single there were a ton of tests but there was never there's never been a single nuclear weapon used against a major population center or any yeah. population center since then because it went from one it, this is the gun control argument applied to nukes if only one group has guns they're going to kill people they're going to kill lots and lots and lots of people because they're the only one with the guns if you have even one other entity that has guns, it becomes exponentially safer. Mutually assured destruction is across the board, and that's why we here at Muddy Waters Media say legalize recreational plutonium for children. Um, <laughs> I know the meme you're talking about. Um, so Shane also had a question for me. He said, this one's for Spike. Uh, what's a good game plan for cooking salmon so that it isn't nasty and why is it still nasty? There's no okay, fix. Listen, There's no fix. Okay, first of all, how dare you? How dare you to come on my show and ask me about salmon? I did, that's, it's, I'm not gonna, okay, so I'm not gonna say it's anti-Semitic, but it's the fish of my people. That, gefilte fish and kippers, those are both disgusting. Salmon is amazing. You cook it with a little bit of teriyaki sauce, a little bit of rosemary, maybe some uh, pineapple, and it's great. That's the answer to that damn question. <laughs> Lucky I don't block you from the show. He also said, same minimum listenership three times. Minimum listenership, minimum listenership, minimum listenership. Boom. Boom. That's about as fast as I can say them. I got to recharge uh, each uh, time. Um, so we have another good question here um, from a uh, Facebook follower who wishes to remain anonymous uh, about immigration. He says, hey, dude, I'm a Christian, but not a conservative. Uh, I agree that borders should be open. Um, we actually believe borders should be private, but fair enough. Um, the issue I take, though, is that it is a very easy thing to say, but when there are incentives for them to come, uh, it makes the situations uh, exponentially worse. Folks not living in states bordering Mexico have no idea what it does to schools and hospitals here. Uh, to just let them all come in would be uh, devastating. However, if they were responsible for their own education and health care and so forth, that would be a different story. I often see anarchists say, let's let them all in. We will deal with the other stuff later. But we know damn well that will never happen. Uh, I would like to see on one of these pages a real conversation about how to make it all happen for the good of everyone. We definitely need labor here in Texas, so we need to make it a lot easier to let folks come in. Uh, but each person needs to be held accountable for any service they use, and me, the taxpayer, should play no part in that. L.A. County alone spends well over $600 million a year in entitlements. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if that's entitlement just for uh, immigrants or, or anyway. Anyway, uh, would like to hear a real conversation on how we can make that work from an anarchist page. So I'll let you start on that. All right, so um, I am I'm private borders advocate. Um, it is low on my tier of priorities because there's so many things that we have to get rid of before that becomes a weapon that is utilized against us. Um, you know, as he alluded to, the welfare, the entitlements that are given in this country, those things need to be removed. Those needs to be removed from the government level. And so, you know, to quote Bastiat um, from the law, it's not that I oppose, right? So the quote was that socialists often uh, complain that when we oppose something being done by the government, we oppose it being done at all. I don't right. oppose welfare through voluntary means. I don't oppose charity. I don't oppose donations. Right, um, right. I don't oppose people giving handouts and hand ups. Um, so get rid of that at a government level. Reduce that incentive. Um, reduce the incentive like what the last topic was with iran get rid of our foreign policy how many countries in south america have we uh been involved with and, and toppled their regimes and, yep. and been so involved with that we drive people away from from those countries um and then they come to us for help and then we turn them away so we're doing exactly what we do with the, the veterans we do that with with people of other countries oh yeah um, yeah yeah so it's, you know, that's South America, that's South Africa, or that's Africa, that's Middle East, that's Europe, that's that's everywhere. We're, we are so involved everywhere around the world in, in so many stupid ways. Um, so that's another way that we got to stop this. The other way is the end of victimless crimes. So most often when we hear libertarians talk about this, they say end the war on drugs. The, the war on drugs is not enough. Right. No, so end no. the war on drugs because we need to actually compete against these cartels that are dragging drugs across our borders. 
allow for American entrepreneurs to produce drugs, yeah. um, to produce marijuana, to grow or to, to have cocaine, to methamphetamines, whatever it is, whatever is on the market, those should be able to be produced in, in a legalized manner. Um, that way, we, the consumers, whatever you want to consume, you can go down to the buffet. You can pick out what kind of drugs you want. You can know about who's producing these things so you can actually have some traceability. You can know right. what's in them. You can know yep. what's not in them. Yep. Um, you can have a safer um, medicated time on those. And, and it's not up to me to tell you not to do something. I'm I'm a 100% advocate of, of decriminalizing drugs in every capacity. I am personally not an advocate of cocaine i have very many bad situations very many bad wow that's very good very goodly in english um i've had a lot of bad experiences not personally but indirectly through others um mm -hmm. with cocaine but right i still want to see it decriminalized so that's one aspect of it now the other aspect that a lot of people talk about when it comes about the southern border is the human trafficking how do you stop human trafficking well you allow for a legal market a decriminalized market here in the states that's called prostitution if you want to go i need to make i need to make money i'm too lazy to go work down at mcdonald's flipping burgers for six dollars an hour because we should be abolishing the minimum wage um, yes because that's all my labor's worth 52 cents I have to, yeah if if i don't want to do that if i'm not willing to participate in the market in other ways i should have the option of being able to do whatever i want with my property and that includes my body right and so we allow for safer transactions for more consent. We're going to be cutting down on the human trafficking. We're going to be cutting down on on the uh, the drugs that are coming across the border. We legalize the Second Amendment. How about that? Uh, you know, shall not be infringed. Allow for weapons of the military to be recreationally owned by the people in the in accordance with the tenor of the Second Amendment, and. Now we're going to have guns, gun trafficking across the southern border. We're going to have all these things that are pushing people and propelling people across the southern border for negative reasons to come into this country. And now what are you left with? You're really left with economic migrants, people that want to come here and better and enrich their own lives. Yes. And if we have that, it's really hard to say this person wants to come here and make an honest living. How dare they? How dare they throw them into a cage? Good sir. Throw them into the cage and send them to Chile. Like, really? Yeah. Like economic migrants. I, I, I make a good argument as to why they shouldn't be here. Right. That doesn't involve you being scared of competing. So I'm. this is one of those times where I'm just going to say everything Jason said slightly differently. Um, so it sounds like I have my own opinion. Um, let's talk about... So I, I really want to focus in on two things. And the first is that the, the whole human trafficking, it, especially as it's related to sex trafficking. Let's take the most innocent thing, wholesome thing that I can think of. Hugging children and puppies. Just finding a child or a puppy, and giving it a big hug, okay? Let's say the government said, hugging children and puppies is dangerous and where it's illegal now. So they ban hugging children and puppies. Again, most wholesome thing you could think of. What would happen? Would people stop hugging children and puppies? No. They'd sneak hugs from children and puppies, but it would get worse <laughs> because it would get worse over time because they'd have to keep ratcheting up in the war on hugging children and puppies they'd have to keep ratcheting up zero tolerance on hugging children and puppies and you would have a black market where now children and puppies would be kidnapped this is real this is a real show and they'll be kidnapped and trafficked around for unsavory people to hug them and god knows what else how long until joe biden gets a match i just <laughs> want to know how long until joe biden gets match <laughs> the whole reason they're trying to kill joe biden's campaign is as part of their goal to ban hugging children i said it finally that's been said by someone out loud so this is the reality like you could take the most innocuous wholesome sweet thing if you make it illegal unsavory characters are going to kidnap people to provide it to you so just make it legal so you can get it from a consenting adult provider going back to the immigration thing specifically i dived up that was all over the place but i'm glad i'm it needed to happen <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad. wondering what kind of adult is going to be selling children to hug <laughs> if it's I illegal know. <laughs> if it's illegal it would be it would cost a fortune to hug a child you'd be spending 500 bucks 
to get your yeah but if it was legal child. then i i wouldn't sell my kid to hug people well, of course you're not <laughs> going to but you don't sell your kids drugs or sell them into prostitution now but there are people doing that I'm just giving an extreme example. Yeah. You could take the most ridiculous no, 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 thing. No, no. Yeah, no, I, I know, I know. But no, you are not. Jason Lyon will not be providing you with kids to hug, okay, America? With your sickness. Um, Watch out, Joe Biden. I'm not giving you nothing. Yeah, Joe, Uncle Touchy's not getting a thing from Jason Lyon. Not on this, not on his watch. Mike, er, Spike and Matt may have endorsed you yesterday and loved you and had a show centered around supporting you, Joe Biden. I saw that. Um, but the I don't Joe know. Joe Biden I, love I hour, yeah. I, this is where the muddied waters really, really splits, you know. Um. This is where the mo- the waters get muddy. Listen, that was the most detailed love fest of Joe Biden that Matt Wright will probably ever give. Uh, but I appreciate him for it. Um, but get, going back yeah. to the Im- immigration argument, this is a perfect example of why government ruins everything. For the first hundred years of the U.S.'s existence... We were, the the U.S. was effectively open borders. It was completely open to unlimited, unregulated migration. And during that time, the U.S. went from being a, 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 a backwoods agrarian society that no one took seriously to the largest economic power on the planet in a, inside of like four generations of, or five generations, however that works, of unlimited migration. Then what happened was Chinese people started coming here. And that scared people because Chinese people were markedly different than up until that point, you had Ben Franklin talking about those dirty, swarthy Germans and how they weren't, you know, like the rest of us good, uh, you know, good, polite white people. I mean, that's that's where English people were, that the the English Anglo-American majority at the time was horrified at all these Scandinavians and Germans coming here. Uh, So with that mindset in, in, in mind, now you got Chinese people coming. They speak a completely different language, family of languages. Their culture is markedly different. And so they started passing these rules, the Chinese Exclusion Acts. And the Supreme, it, it took a while for it, to, for it to be ruled constitutional because the Constitution says nothing about controlling migration at all. Uh, it left that to the states or the people as per the 10th Amendment. Uh, but the Supreme Court, using an incredibly skewed interpretation of commerce, said, oh, yeah, they can, they can definitely control migration. And that's when it started. But now it gets worse. Now you have the government destabilizing almost every country in the Middle East, uh, tampering with all of them, but destabilizing one cent- or, uh, South America, not Middle East. Well, Middle East too, but Central and South America, they're destabilizing these countries for various political reasons. And then they're also cutting off trade with these countries and then wondering in shock and horror why they're coming here to try to not starve to death. If you did two things, if the government did two things, stop destabilizing the rest of the world and open up free, unrestricted trade to the rest of the world, besides all of the effects, it, all of the positive effects it would have for us in the lowering of the cost of, of goods and services and opening up markets for our exports, uh, as well as the dividend of not having to pay for a, a, a nearly trillion dollar a year military that you know blows up the earth. T- putting those things aside, you'd also see a drastic reduction in people seeking refuge and coming illegally or legally because their countries would be better. Their countries would be far better off if we weren't de- if our government wasn't destabilizing them. Those two things alone, without even touching the welfare state. Here's the other thing about the welfare state: get rid of the welfare state. Something like, uh, what is it? Half a million immigrants are going to come to the U.S this year on average from the last few years that's legal and illegal R- roughly a half million net coming here four million americans are going to be born eight times as many americans are going to be born during that same time and the vast majority of them are going to vote either republican or democrat which means they're going to be voting for the welfare state so if we're yeah, saying voting against you they're voting against you and them, but uh, but you. That's what matters right now in the moment is they're voting against your interests. If we say that we should control migration, control otherwise peaceful human activity because of the potential for the growth of the welfare state, and that that is a legitimate reason to stop otherwise peaceful human activity, why are we not applying that to pe- people being born? Why are we not saying one child policy? 
like China did for that very reason. Why are we not saying you can only have one kid, maybe two kids if you're in a rural area? Uh, but, you know, because, you know, we just got to we got to really clamp down on this whole this whole welfare state thing, because that is a far greater threat than legal or illegal immigration. And in fact, according to Milton Freeman and, uh, and many other uh, libertarians, illegal immigrant in the case of the welfare state, illegal immigration is actually preferable to legal immigration because it's harder for them to get on welfare. So that's a whole other subject yeah. and, and, and social security. Here's the, my last take on this when it comes to immigration. I've completely blanked, but I, I like <laughs> literally, as I said, I'm like, um, the state, the government, blah, 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 blah. government, bad, government, bad immigration. Good. Man, I just completely... So go, go even ahead. going off of what you were talking about, when you were talking about the, the welfare and the, the entitlements and everything else, um, we have a couple people murmuring that are running for office right now that are talking about how Social Security and, and all these entitlement welfare systems are going to be insolvent already. So right. why not just nip it in the bud and stand up and say, stop wasting my money. Give me my money. I will donate it. I'll take care of my grandma. I'll take care of grandpa. Grandpa Grandpa was so good to me. I remember so many great Christmases. He got me a little BB gun. Right. I got banned from school for it because I put pictures of it up online and I live in New Jersey. But I that was a great BB gun. Thank right. you, Grandpa. So I'm right. gonna take care of my grandpa. So right. don't don't you taxpayers don't worry about it. I got this. I got this. Let me take care of him. Let my family take care of him. He created a big family. I won't ask you guys. Let's just end the damn welfare system and make it to where it's a non-issue. If we stop providing and subsidizing everybody because they're alive and allow people to, to prosper on their own and allow them to be responsible, then those who are irresponsible can rely upon a social safety net rather than a government mandated net. Yep. I, I, I fail to see how a, a civilized society requires a government force to, to, to exist. Yeah, absolutely. And to go back to the point of, well, that'll, we know damn well, that'll never happen. Okay. Well, if then in that case, we also know that they'll never actually close up the border because it's not in their interest to do that. We also know that they, which is way easier uh, 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 the, the ending the welfare state is way easier than stopping all human beings from entering a gigantic landmass across forests and oceans and and deserts. Like that's a lot easier. Especially to just, when planes are coming in and you airplanes, got it, just... tunnels, boats. Give me a freaking break, because because yeah. you would have to like stop all travel, and that's obviously not going to happen. So within this porous system we of people coming and going. Avocados. Avocado. I, I love, avo first of all, I love avocados, but I also love the 50% of American goods that have at least one Mexican component in them. When we're talking about Mexican trade, they are our largest trading partner. They are a larger trading partner than Canada. Or, uh, well, they are larger, but a larger trading partner than China. Gasoline. You like gas for your car? I mean, it's it's just, it's 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 crazy. And so if we're saying, well, that's not going to happen, okay, fine, then none of these other things are going to happen either, and, and and which is very possibly true. But if we're talking what should be done, then let's talk what really should be done, ending the welfare state, ending the uh, 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 the, the destabilization of other countries, um, and, and opening up trade um, so that fewer of these people need to come, and the ones that do come are coming to work hard and contribute, or to start a business or whatever. They're coming to contribute and be a net contributor and not drain your taxes just like all the people be freaking born here how about them too um and then and then the, the point that i finally remembered was that for the people that say well they're taking our jobs your threat is not from someone who just got here who probably doesn't speak english your threat is from the fact that government through taxes regulations uh and and various other uh, uh barriers to entry that they've created make your labor less valuable than that of someone who just got here, who barely speaks the language, if at all, and who hiring them risks prosecution. 
They're still more valuable than you because government made you so expensive to hire. And I'm not talking minimum wage. I'm talking regulations, taxes. When you hire an American, you have to pay half of their payroll tax and half of their social security. You have and you to, also have to make sure that they have entitlements and, and everything else that they mandate. There are so many mandates. And the higher up in the wage scale it goes, the worse it gets. Most states now have required pension contributions. It's absurd what it costs to hire an American. And most of it's not to your benefit. Most of it's just going to the government. And it makes illegal labor, labor that they can be prosecuted for hiring labor that is not going to be as good as yours. It might be as good as yours, but it's, it's, they're not going to speak the language. Skilled, unskilled, whatever. It makes it automatically way more attractive than yours. And that is entirely the government's fault. Imagine if a scenario in which I am holding a gun to Jason, Jason's head like this, because I'm way bigger than him right now. And I go, Jason, I'm robbing you every day. And I rob Jason every day. And then some poor other schmuck figures out a way to get around me so that I, I can't rob him. And Jason's mad not at me for robbing him. He's mad at that guy who was able to get away from me. It's hard when, when this is like the mirror effect. The <laughs> Jason's not mad at me for robbing him. He's mad at the guy who got away from it. And he's saying, hey, you rob him too. That is the anti-immigration argument in a nutshell. Hey, that guy... It's not fair that I'm being robbed and made my labor made less attractive. Do that to him too. And and to expand upon that, while you're holding that gun against me and while you're taking Here, do my it to money, me. Do it to me now. Um oh. Yep. Yep. There we go. All right. Um Almost. while I'm taking your money. Oh there no. We go. Oh no. Yeah, that is really difficult. Uh, <laughs> while I'm sitting here and, and you're taking, or I'm taking your money, I'm going to take that money and I'm going to put it into healthcare services. I'm going to put it into education. I'm going to put it into a right. lot of different things. Right. And that person that's gone around this system potentially could be utilizing those systems. They're using my roads and everything else. And so as a result, you're going to get mad at that guy. Because the, he's utilizing the system that you're paying for. Exactly. Instead of mad at the guy with the gun. Yep. Like, we keep getting mad at each other. We keep allowing this division to happen instead of looking at those who are dividing us. Instead of looking at the actual omnipotent being that is government and actually holding its feet to the fire and actually understanding what its purpose is and what it's been doing and understanding what what role it has done in order to make our lives worse and yep. in order to ensure that there's more and more division. Yep, exactly, exactly. I'm going to change this out because I don't want my my silence to be construed as consent to having a gun, <laughs> fake fake gun pointed at my head. Um, so yeah, I think we, we covered that. I, I think you need to apply free market principles and the, and the immigration problem or the problems that are coming as a result of that whole pro of that whole situation. They go away because it's not immigration is not the problem the problem is everything else related to the government uh we have a question from a really great guy spike cohen uh jason you hate baseball and mangoes why are you a communist and how do you plan to stop being that so if if you're a fan of baseball com or mangoes communism uh pineapple on pizza <clears throat> I, I, I have no support for you, but I think that this is where you project onto others by saying if you oppose if you oppose those things that somehow you're a communist, but it's only communists that really enjoy that stuff. And so um, I think what we can all agree on is that putting trash, literal trash, like just take your trash can, dump it on your pizza, that would taste better than pineapple. If you want a decent wait, wait, fruit... Wait, how does this become about pineapple? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're okay, going to finish right, here no, okay, because fair, okay, fair. I got fired over this, all right? Um, for those of you guys un unaware, we had this conversation in the Muddy Waters chat, which is why I, I, I'm sure it came up tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, no. That's I was fired definitely... after bringing up that pineapples do not belong on pizza. If you enjoy mangoes, um, you might as well just admit that you enjoy butt stuff at every waking moment with phallically uh, shaped objects I'm, that I'm were calling made the police. By... <laughs> <laughs> calling the police the canadian police 
Go ahead. No, keep going. Keep, I want him to hear it. <laughs> the, you know, you, you enjoy butt stuff with the phallically shaped things that have sandpaper, literal sandpaper on them, um, because the more bleeding, the better. And uh, baseball is the most boring sport out there. I yes, would hello, Canadian, please. Yes, WNBA. hi, hi, yes. Hi, longtime fan. <laughs> uh, WNBA I'm calling. Can you get a, is, a, a Mountie? Entertaining I need a Mountie in Greenville from- County. I need a Mountie in Greenville County, South Carolina. Um, I have a com. Yeah, I have a communist. Oh, you so, like tell you like the, oh you like communist. They need to come and apologize immediately. All right, they are. <laughs> they're happy. They agree with you because they're also communist. Um, that's fine. So um, and and for the baseball thing, just real quick, baseball uh, of the sports is equivalent to the Saints for the NFL. All right, just absolute garbage. Just needs to be wiped off the face of the planet. Um, that's if Shane, if you're still out there, oh, I'm uh, sure he is. I'm shots sure fired. He is. I'm sure. I'm sure he is. <laughs> so I think you knew that this was essentially a probationary episode after your little, uh, your little, your little outburst on the, the group chat there. Um, I don't know where we go from this, my friend. I don't know where we go. We're gonna have some. We're gonna, we're gonna need to, an intervention. We're gonna have to have a huddle. I'm probably bringing your wife in. The, the, I, I more than likely we're gonna have some more candid screenshots from your wife that we can use uh, against you in your trial. Um, so, well, that's good. So we have one more question uh, before we go and decide your fate. Uh, we have one more question from uh, Jacob Labelle, another longtime viewer. Uh, and I feel terrible because I, I still haven't really read up on this, so I'm really going to let you take the lead on this one. He said, what's mm-hmm. up with Putin and Pence being recalled at the same time that the EU convened a special security session? And then I'm adding the whole, because you mentioned it, the whole Russian sub thing. So tell us about that, because I, I did not have the time today to look into this. Yeah, so yesterday was a day of fuckery, um, <laughs> to, to put it bluntly. Um, okay. Yesterday, there was a lot of questions, a lot of questions and absolutely no answers in accordance with how the media normally functions for us. Um, so yesterday, while quoted as heading towards New Hampshire, I believe it was. Oh, wow. Um, Mike Pence was turned around. Oh, I thought you said um, the sub was oh, okay. I thought you meant the sub was headed to New Hampshire. Okay, that's we, better. No, no, we. I want. I want to cover everything. So okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. Well, on the way to New Hampshire, um, the Mike Pence plane, Air Force Two, was told to turn about. Okay. Um, you have to come back for an unspecified situation in Washington. So, we still the next day still don't really have any answers to this Mm -hmm. so everyone has been scouring and trying to figure out what is it that could have possibly been this quote-unquote situation um that's going to bring the vice president back to um back to washington now at the same time there's a couple people saying that this was following in line with air force one where the uh president of the united states donald trump was also flying so you have both of these planes coming back to washington so obviously it's a big serious huge deal not a situation right Um, emergency would be closer to what people would expect right um we still don't have any answers mark short who was with uh vice president mike pence uh when they were called back said that we don't there will be more information provided later and said that it would be weeks from now so we don't know much oh wow now. so oh wow looking at the world and what's been going on obviously iran has been a big um a big questioning factor of something happening there. So people were scouring, trying to figure out what's coming out from Iran. Did Iran have another uh, quote unquote false flag attack? Did they have another event happen over there? Um, what's going on with Iran so far? I haven't been able to find anything going on there. Nothing else in the middle East, nothing driving over there, but over there in Russia, um, president Vladimir Putin, um, he was also recalled. And so there was a submersible, um, let me see if I can get the actual name of this, a scientific deep submersible boat, um, basically just dives down real deep, gets all the the deep searches and and everything else. This is a nuclear powered ship um, that had actually, or nuclear powered boat. I apologize for those of you naval people, you understand the difference. Um, 
there was 14 Russian Navy servicemen that were killed in a fire from there. Okay. Now, we don't know what caused the fire, but it has already been reported. Um, or sorry, I just I had misread the tweet when I read it earlier. But there are no abnormal levels of radiation, so there it was nuclear power. So it's not, um, it's not a concern for you know like a, a Chernobyl two or anything else. Right. Um, right. <clears throat> okay. But we know that Russia has has obtained their boat, so it's not a it's not like their their last submarine that went down that they basically told every country if you go and collect our boat, we will that's an act of war and we will kill you, let our servicemen die. Um, they have obtained it back. They put out the fire, and only fourteen members were killed, and that was killed by um, in smoke inhalation or suffocation. Um, so we don't we don't have enough information yet. But it could be between those two things, the concern of if there was a fire, if there was a a release of nuclear fission products into the atmosphere, what that could have meant for the surrounding areas. Um, You know, after Fukushima happened, the nuclear tension and the um, the timidness when it comes to nuclear things is still very real in this in this world. Um, That could have been enough to spur up enough to where we need to have you know, the, the, the big brains, if you will, if we want to call Trump and Pence that, um, back in, back at the reins and, and making sure that they're making the right calls. Um, so we don't have enough information, so I'm sorry, Jacob, we can't give you a better answer than that. Well, I like how you started it. It was a lot of fuckery going on. Like some, something, (laughs) something that, uh, big whoopsie doodle happened yesterday and, uh, it may or may not have had to do with the sub. My immediate hot take is wondering remembering the time of the cold war all the boats were research boats and you know mm-hmm. it, oh we're just research we're just taking some pictures down here in our nuclear powered ship um now it, was it a sub or a boat i don't know a deep submersible so a deep submersible can be a submarine um okay. as a former submariner uh there are submarines that can go excessively deep for no reason whatsoever there's no need for it so they don't we don't go nearly as deep anymore but you can still do that um okay. with an actual su- submarine but you if you have a small circular ship it's actually is better for for going deep the, rather than a long phallically shaped submarine which is more designed to be down there longer periods of time and and travel the 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 oceans uh, as opposed to something that just goes deep deep down so this research Mm -hmm. vessel there may have been some kind of i'm again and i'm using total speculation here it may have been more than just a research vessel in the u.s use some kind of hacking tool to screw them up and then whatever or it could be completely unrelated so they said so we won't even know for possibly for weeks what that was about if then yeah yeah very good and then we waiting until everything gets declassified Okay, and then we just got a question also from Jacob LaBelle, and I I have no idea what he's talking about. Um, he said, uh, by the way, Chris Reynolds said, Chernobyl 2 would be a great Netflix sequel. <laughs> just... oh, oh, no. <laughs> this time it's personal. Oh. Like all the mutants, so, like, like quick the side. Chernobyl mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Quick side story. So um, some people know, some people don't. So let, let me just come out with it. I was a nuclear operator on board submarines for the Navy. I was a, a mechanic um, who worked and operated the uh, the auxiliary systems as well as worked on the nuclear plant itself. Okay. And um, so one of the things through training, we actually had to sit down and watch. It, it felt like six, 600 years of, of Chernobyl information and do research and understand the failures there. And uh, Chernobyl too, man, <laughs> if, if you fail once, right? Shame on, shame on you fail twice. It's not Russia. Stop, stop having nukes. Um, America has already gotten to that point, by the way. Right, right. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are. I mean, when you look at like, they have these charts that show, uh, sorry, I'm, I made the mistake of responding to someone as you were going. You're when, good. W- when you look at the lists of like who has the nukes and there's like, you know, the U.S. has this ridiculous amount and Russia has a smaller but also ridiculous amount and then China has this amount and then the each, you know, then you'll have countries that have like four and then two and, the, and then Jeff has one. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Jeff is important. Jeff, <laughs> don't F with Jeff. 
<laughs> and if it's one of those Jeffs like G E O F F, we're all screwed. Yes, but he, he he is the one that is actually saving the world. Like people need to understand this. The mutual discussion, what you were talking about before, oh, mutual assured destruction from Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> what more do you want? Right? We're gonna nuke that one guy. He's gonna nuke a million people. That is not. That is disproportional. And Trump will make tweets making sure that people know that as a dispor- disproportionate attack. And so we cannot nuke Jeff. Oh, yeah. Well, Trump was going to uh, nuke Jeff, but then he found out that like 200 other Jeffs would be killed. Um, and some Jakes, too. Some Jeffs and some Jakes. Um, so I have Leave one the Jasons more. Jason's alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have. Oh, so anyway, Jacob LaBelle asked about the Greek. What? The Cypriot. Hold on. He asked about the Cypriot Syria thing. Do you know what that even. Do you know what that is? I uh, no, no, I don't know. I, I am, I am all out of ideas right now. The Cypriot Syria thing is in our thoughts and prayers, uh, Jacob. And then I have one more question here, and and it's a good okay. one, and it really is truly a gotcha question, including for me. Um, so I feel terrible because, uh, um. Uh, and so he says, so it was from Chris Reynolds, attorney at law. He said, the natural rights list them. Yeah. So I'm going to let you start on that. Yeah. I'm, that's a, do you want me to start on that? I, I can, I can start on that because you're going to say it much more eloquently than me and you're, it's going to sound much more polished. Oh, nice. Yeah. I like, I like, that's definitely so you why you should do this first. Better. Yeah. You do um, it first. Cause so- mine's way better. Go ahead. Natural rights. What is your natural rights? What? How do they get derived and, and where do they come from? So um, getting a little bit further into my ideology and my views and, and everything else, I am a pro-life libertarian. Um, rights are not, they don't get bestowed upon you at a certain stage or a certain point within the human development cycle. Once you are born, you're basically a, a free entity. Now, of course, during the very early development stages of a human, you're kind of attached to somebody and and, um, that's that's how that works. But right, right. Once you divorce from that, then you are your own free entity in order to exercise your rights. You're more free to exercise your rights. You don't just gain them. Um, So what are your rights? What do they actually mean? Your rights are what you choose to do with your body. Now there are bad examples or bad uses of your rights and there are good uses of your rights what is an example of a bad use it is to utilize yourself your property your whatever in order to infringe upon somebody else's property or rights or whatever it is so as long as you are acting uninhibited then you're free to exercise your rights and as long as you're not infringing upon others then you would be on the quote-unquote good side of utilizing your rights um this includes the right to self-defense the freedom of speech the freedom to practice whatever religion you want i believe that there's a leprechaun on the dark side of the mood strumming a guitar with his nipples and i can believe that because i have the freedom of whatever religion i want um and i, I have the freedom I, I, and i i want to and i want to join Send, oh, in, in, inbox me more info on that after the episode <laughs> um you know i have the freedom of my property and so if i have a house if i have a car if i have um a chest i have a book bag whatever it is that's mine you don't get to go into it you don't get to search it you don't get to infiltrate it you don't get to spy on it it's mine leave right. it alone so i own whatever i can create or whatever i justly obtain so if i want to interact with, with spikes got a a communistic bottle of water and i'm i'm parched at the moment and i want to give him a communistic uh piece of currency also called a mango i could give him a mango and he gives me his commie water you know what i i get i get i get i get get, get, you know i i let you on my show (laughs) this man on my anniversary (laughs) <laughs> oh man. On my anniversary comes on <laughs> to tell my viewing audience that I'm a communist. No, continue. No, continue. I want to I want to hear the rest of this 
of your of your. All right. I hear, so keep going. So if I want to give you my commie currency for something that I think would be of value and you find it to be of value, then I can make that trade. And that's a natural right. right. I own my property, right. you own your property, and we can justly trade be between us. Now, where natural rights are infringed upon is whenever we have a third party coming in and telling us you can't trade that you can't do this i get to look into your property i get to prevent you from from being able to defend yourself with whatever you decide you want to defend yourself with um you can't practice this religion even though you're not hurting somebody else we don't like you saying this we don't like you doing that um you can't make memes you can't do this that and the other then we having the infringement and that of course is the only thing that has ever been backed by the people has been the government doing that. Uh, another one that is not so well liked is the mob and, and or the mafia or gangs, even though they're pretty well synonymous with one another. Right. Um, and so natural rights are important. We need to be looking at them and we need to be trying to restore as many natural rights as possible so that we can be independent. Um, because those infringements prevent us from being as prosperous and as good as we could be um, because the government sucks and wants to have a monopoly on us. Right. Um, I, I, it's so difficult whenever somebody says natural rights and then go. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, you've done a great job. Uh, and, 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 and you're right. Cause if you, if you let infringements happen, they accumulate over time. And, and uh, again, going back to the immigration argument what happens is people go well if you're infringing on me you have to do these other infringements to make sure that that person can't get over on me because of this infringement and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse yes uh, and you end up with a terrible terrible system um getting into like because i when i saw the question i'm like i specifically promised jason no gotcha questions but that he was like natural rights list them okay one you know so uh here here's how i'll, I'll try to list them i guess or at least explain my take on it, which is pretty much what, what Jason said, but I'm going to try to like frame it within, you know, you have rights one, two, three, and so on. Uh, natural rights come from the concept of self-ownership. So I guess that's your first natural right. You own yourself. And that's sort of an inherent intuitive thing that even in theory, anyway, anything for anyone from communists to, to, you know, anyone outside of the, the, you know, like, the fascist spectrum who they don't believe you have rights fascists believe that it's all about the state communists also do but they they don't say it they they they, yeah. they believe you have rights but their concept of what rights are are completely out there but they will agree that we own ourselves you own you own yourself and you own so you own your body you and, and everything that comes from that so you can speak freely because it's your body and you can say what you want you own your the consent to whether or not someone's using your body uh or you're using your body for someone else or, or whatever so labor and things like that you are you have the right to your labor because it comes from your body when you mix your labor with uh other resources that you've accumulated you create property you have a right to that i can't wait to find out why you're laughing and uh uh you you have a right so so you you have a right to i don't have a specific list but if you go yeah. from you own yourself and Everything from there and your voluntary interactions with others and your property that you've accumulated, all of your rights fall within all of that. Now, tell me what's so funny. The side, it's it was. Is this, uh, a, is this I, about I is this about butt um, butt stuff? Is this a butt stuff thing? It, it might be a butt stuff. stuff. It, it, it feels um, like a butt stuff thing. Butt stuff stuff. I like it. But uh, butt stuff stuff. <laughs> stuff the butt stuff. Um. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right, and, and and the basic principle there, like you started off with, was self ownership. You own yourself, and so you own what yourself produces. You right. own everything that that comes from it, and you protect yourself. You you own yourself. You sell yourself. You trade yourself. You do whatever it is you want, and then yep. any any inhibition or any um, hurdles that come along the way is un is wrong and immoral. You have a so. natural, you have a natural right to butt stuff. A natural. It's natural butt stuff. Mm, organic, natural. organic, free range, non-GMO butt stuff. That's how we're ending this episode. Jason, 
It has been an absolute thrill to have you on. I'm so happy you were able to join me. And um, before I let you go, I want to give you a chance to give any final thoughts specifically about butt stuff. Um, no, anything you want to talk about. Anything you want to promote, any events coming up with the Greenville or South Carolina Libertarian parties. Anything you want to talk about. Anything you, that you think that we should have covered. I give you as much time as you need. Jason Lyon, the floor is yours. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I, I first want to say thank you so much, Spike. This, this has been uh, an amazing time filled with laughter and joy. And it will certainly <laughs> be one of the most memorable um, events that I've been to. And, um, you know, to be able to celebrate one year with you. And and I've, I've, I actually did go through and I watched some of your older episodes and, and to see how far you've developed in this. Time, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. And thank you. Um, I... I, I love what you've been doing and um, I will always be here to support you and to help you. And, and thank you. Um, I want to help you grow because I, I don't think that there's uh, anybody out there that uh, is doing quite what you're doing. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And it's truly an honor to come on with you on your show. Um, the thing that I want to plug is here in South Carolina, Potentially, I may be maybe swindling the the great Spike Cohen, the local Jew, to coming up to Florence County here oh, in yeah, November. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we will potentially be having as many, if not all, of the Libertarian presidential candidates for 2020 coming onto one debate stage for one night. Where Spike and myself may be, uh, may be sitting there and and. Maybe maybe we'll be able to get Matt up there as Matt well. Matt better freaking come up if we get that. Yes, yes, and and be able to come up and and come out. And so if you can't travel the country, if you can't travel around the world, you can't get your visa on time to come here. Um, we have we will be putting on the streaming it out and and being able to make that available to you guys. So this November. Um, big day coming up for that. Um, that's coming from the South Carolina Libertarian Party. So big shout out to them for for setting up and organizing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, my apologies to them because I'm going to be one of the uh, big portions of helping out with the audio and video. But we will make sure that it is up to snuff and and oh yeah, um, a fantastic production there. And I want to give a shout out to Matt, to Shane, to uh, Brent. And of course, to Spike, I've been uh, pretty ruthless to you all. And uh, I love you all. And I appreciate everything that you guys have been doing. And, um, you know, we can all have a great time. We can have this infighting. And it's it's beautiful for us all to be growing and to be able to have fun while doing it. And oh, yeah. last thing, last but not least, if you guys want to be able to find follow me, not only can you follow me, of course, right along with Muddy Waters, on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, uh, Anchor FM, Anchor FM, Anchor FM, Anchor and of FM. course, MuddyWatersFreedoms.com. But you can also follow me personally on Twitter at Mr. Bearded Truth. Um, so just the one little plug there. And and with that, I, I just got to say again, tonight was amazing. Thank you so much, Spike, for letting me come on. Yeah, absolutely. It's all in great fun. Um, you are fired, uh, but it was in great fun. <laughs> Um, and I love the visa. So guys, if you're not able to get your visa to come to South Carolina from N North international. Carolina from, oh, international. Oh, inter yeah, no, international. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did say international. Oh, okay. okay. I didn't, I didn't catch that. I just caught the visa and I'm like, yeah, for all those Wilmingtonians trying to come to South Carolina without going through my legal process. Um, so yeah, <laughs> no Carolinians, you, you, you lesser Carolinians stop trying to come to best, <laughs> best Carolina. Um, so yeah, again, thank you so much for joining and coming on. This has been freaking awesome. I, I know we went way over what we would have expected, but it was because it was that good of an episode. So thank you again. Um, I'm going to make sure that we're not missing out on any last minute questions. Um, and, uh, Kelsey says baseball and I'll just leave that up to the audience to decide what she's asking there. But yes, baseball is for non-communists. Um, so she's smiling. So. I don't okay good okay wow well, it's 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 whatever um but again thank you if you, if you can just stick around i'm going to talk to you during the outro if that's okay um yeah, guys absolutely. guys thank you again for joining us for this 
awesome one year anniversary episode. I'm so excited that that we've gotten this far. I'm so excited with how well the show is done. Um, really, really had an absolute blast. Um, be sure to join us. Uh, you're not joining us tomorrow because tomorrow is the July 4th. Be sure to celebrate tomorrow, the day that Americans rounded up, banded together, and killed thousands upon thousands of law enforcement officials. And then later uh, had new law enforcement officials impose those same taxes. But that part we're not, that's not the part we're celebrating. We're not celebrating that part. We're just, that's not the fun part. We celebrate that on tax day. On, on it's April 15th that we celebrate that. On July 4th, we celebrate the old cops getting thrown out. So be sure to do that. Be safe. Have a fun time. Eat way more than you should, but do it safely and have a fun time. Don't eat. I, I, don't listen to me. Just have a fun time. And then, uh, are you doing a show Friday? I will be doing a show Friday. Okay. Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's Jason Lyon on Friday. And uh, and then have a great weekend. Um, and then join uh, Jason again. Are you doing Monday too? I will be doing Monday as well. Jason Lyon, Mr. America, the Bearded Truth on Monday. And then tune in Tuesday for the uh, for the Muddy Waters of Freedom where uh, Matt Wright and I parse through the week's events with the giddiness and joy of a laughing child. <laughs> um, and then on Wednesday, be sure to tune in again right here on Wednesday, probably at 8 Eastern-ish. For my fellow Americans, the 1.1 year anniversary episode. And I think, who's my guest? I don't know who my guest is. I have a guest. I just don't remember who it is. You're not going to believe who it is. They're a great guest. It's a They're great a guest. Huge guest. Huge guest. Best the guest. Best. Uh, the best guest. The best guest. So be sure to tune in next week. Guys, thank you again so much. We've had a great time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And God bless you. Tell me how, tell me 
Please.